Hello everyone, today we got a story of a kid who looks up some pretty uh, not so great stuff, so not so safe for work stuff, on the school computer, in class, and he gets caught by the teacher. It's super awkward, but it's also a pretty good story, so let's jump right into it. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story, Brent. So anyways, there was a kid in Brent's class who we're going to call Ben. And Ben was the kid who just loved to troll everyone. He just loved to basically prank everybody to just, I, I don't know how else to say it, right? And Ben had been known for doing this for a long time. And he'd done this in different ways. For example, when they were younger, he would go around and when people weren't looking, he would literally pants them. He'd go behind them and rip down their pants. He got in a lot of trouble for this. So afterwards, the trolling that Ben would do would be a little bit less extreme up until present day, AKA the story, which I'm about to get to, right? So this all started on what seemed like a normal day. And in their classes, every kid was allowed to bring in a computer. And uh, so they must have been in probably seventh or eighth grade. They must have been later on, right? And one thing that I can tell you about, if, if you have a computer in class, even if it's totally allowed for you to have a computer in class, I know for a fact that if you were to randomly like freeze everybody's computer, that nine out of 10 of them would not be doing anything related to classwork. You know, you got some like web video games or maybe you're reading the newspaper. I really, it, look, at the end of the day, if you're on the computer in class, you're probably not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I don't know why teachers haven't figured this out yet, but it's just facts and reality. However, Brent decided, or sorry, Ben decided that this was gonna be the perfect opportunity to troll people. This was gonna be the perfect opportunity to pull one of the biggest pranks he's ever done. Well, not really, but you'll see what I mean. So this all started on what seemed like a normal day. And Brent was in the class with Ben, and this is when he got a tap on his shoulder. And Brent's like, dude, dude, you need to see this right now. It's super breaking news. And you know, at this point, Brent kind of is curious because if someone like taps you on your shoulder and says, you need to see this right now, this is super important. This is breaking news, man. You need to look at this right now. I mean, you're gonna take a look. You gotta be at least a little curious. You know what I mean? So sure enough, Brent assumes, okay, maybe this is something bad. Maybe this is something I really do need to pay attention to. So he looks over and, and Ben shows him his computer and Ben literally just looked up some really, really disgusting stuff. Like, just imagine what's the worst thing. Like, I, there's so many things on the internet that you can look up that are gross, disgusting, disturbing, etc. Just insert one of those, right? Just insert one of those onto the computer. So Brent looks at it, and he turns away. He's like, ah, oh, like, dude, gross. Why would you show me that? And Ben's just laughing the whole time. He's just sitting back. He's laughing, and at this point, Brent's like, bro, I can't, I want to scrub my brain right now. That's so gross. And, of course, this is all happening in class. And, like, ten minutes later, Brent looks and sees Ben turning to another guy. And he hears him say, hey, ma'am, like, hey, man, did you see this, like, update, like, about class tomorrow? Like, do you see this email from the principal? Something really crazy happened, like, at another class, I think it's really going to affect us. And this kid is probably like, oh, are we getting class off or something? So sure enough, Ben turns around his computer screen, shows the kid, and the kid's like, dude, that's sick. Oh, God. Why would you show me that? And Ben's just like freaking out the whole, not Ben, Ben's just like laughing. He's just like, oh, I got you, bro. I got you again. And I got you good. So yeah, this kid keeps on doing it. It gets to the point where Ben even, like, you know, he goes up to some girl or whatever, shows her something, and it's so bad that this girl literally, like, screams mid-class. And the teacher looks up, and Brent thinks, okay, Ben 100% is going to get caught. Like, and, you know, he thought this before the girl screamed, but when the girl screamed, like, she didn't, like, I don't know. It wasn't like a blood-curdling, full-blast, full-volume scream. But she definitely let, let, a, uh, let a shocked remark out of her mouth, right? And so the teacher looks over and Brent thinks, okay, finally, Ben's going to get caught. He's going to get in trouble. He's going to lose his computer privileges. And then he will not be a, he will not like be a tirade and a tyrant, not a tirade. He won't be a tyrant in class making us look at all this garbage, right? Thankfully, it's finally time. However, the teacher says, you two, quiet down. 
the teacher doesn't even investigate the fact that the girl screamed or anything. The girl's, you know, the girl's not going to, like, turn her in or anything like that. So the girl legitimately just is like, you know, looks at him. He's like, you're so gross, Ben. Like, don't show me that stuff ever again. And Ben's just laughing or whatever. And Brent is like, okay, well, at least it can't get worse because all I know is that if Ben told, tells me to look at his computer screen, this is actually a really simple fix. I'm just not going to do it. Like, I'm just not going to show, like, I'm not going to, like, look at his computer screen. Brent, Brent really thought that Ben wasn't going to realize this. Brent really thought that Ben was not going to take his trolling, his, his, his epic pranks, to the next level. And this is where Brent is wrong. Because Ben's about to just step it up one more notch. Anyways, made it this far into the video, comment, uh, prank down below. That would be the secret word of the day. Subscribe if you're new. And leave a like in the video to claim you're free nothing. Anyways, let's go back to it. So sure enough, Brent thinks, okay, next time that Ben comes over and tries to show me his computer screen, all I need to do is simply not look at it. Like, how hard that can that be? It's like that uh, Tyler the Creator tweet, like, haha, what is cyberbullying? Just, like, turn off your computer, ha ha ha. It's like that tweet, right? All he's got to do is just not look at it. However, he is very wrong. Because uh, next day comes around. Brent's sitting in class. And Ben is not even that close to him. That's the crazy part about what you're about to hear. Ben's not even sitting that close to him. He is sitting behind him. He's not sitting in the front of the room as what is about to happen would logistically be a little bit more difficult if Ben was sitting front and center and uh, Bri Brian and Brent was sitting all the way in the back. However, Brent has to go to the bathroom, raises his hand, goes to the bathroom, comes back into class, not thinking that anything uh, suspicious just happened. However, when he walks back into class, he looks at Ben, and Ben has a smirk on his face. And Brent thinks that, you know, Ben is smirking because he just pranked someone else to look at his computer and to see something mad gross, right? That's what Brent assumes. And if I was in Brent's shoes, I would probably think the same thing. But Brent sits down, and he looks at his computer screen. And what was on there before? I don't know. Wall Street Journal, Slither.io, I, I don't know, man. But what is on a screen now is full screen, audio muted, really uncomfortable, gross video that you would not want to be shown having on in class. And he turns it off immediately, right? He exits the full screen, clicks out of it, probably a thousand viruses downloaded from that site on his computer. He's like, God, God. He turns around and like half the, not half the class, but all the kids behind him are just looking at him. And they're just kind of looking at each other. And like, okay, at least Brent knows that these kids don't think that he looked this up on his own because they very clearly saw Ben go over and like type that in or whatever. I'm honestly just surprised that the teacher's been oblivious the entire time. Because guys, this is happening during class. And actually, a little mini story, this I can 100% relate to. Because I was sitting in the common room, right? Anyone can walk through at my college. And I'm just sitting with one of my friends. And I go to the bathroom. Huge mistake. It's like first person to fall asleep. It's like those memes where it's like first person to fall asleep at the sleepover. And it shows like their head being chopped in half or something. Big mistake. I went to use the bathroom, which is my fault. Sorry for having to like exercise my bodily fluids out of my body, bro. My fault. I come back and there's a video playing on my computer in the common room. Thankfully, I'm mute. But, dude, people are walking through, and then people walk, see me, walk back to the computer with this video playing, and I turn it off, and I'm just like, really? Are you serious right now? Really? A anyways, though, so, you know, Brent, at this point, is like, I can't even leave my computer alone for a second without this kid trolling, right? And so, another kid goes to like leave gets up and leaves to go to the bathroom and this is where brent actually has an opportunity to see how the whole troll slash prank goes because he watches as some kid gets up and then he looks back and he sees that ben has his smirk on his face and ben gets up and quickly walks over and sits down at this kid's desk what he's doing here is when the teacher kind of like is at the wa like the chalkboard or whiteboard and writing something up the teacher does occasionally glance back to look at the class and if the teacher saw, you know, Ben standing up at this kid's desk typing something, that would be suspicious. But the thing is, the teacher only quickly glances back. We know when the teacher's doing stuff at the whiteboard. This is not like a super engaged discussion-based class. This is more lecture-based 
as lecture based as eighth grade classes get, right? And uh, so when he looks back, he's going to see Ben sitting down at a desk. I mean, he's not even going to see Ben necessarily. He's just going to see all of his students sitting down at their desks, at their computers. He's not going to think anything of it. He would have thought something of it if this kid was standing up at a desk. He would have then been like, wait, this kid isn't sitting here. So as long as Ben is sitting down, and as long as he gets from point A to point B quick enough that the teacher doesn't turn around to see him running to a desk, because that obviously is suspicious, right? So sure enough, he goes on this kid's computer, which he gets there before it turns on to sleep, because no one's really putting their computer to sleep to go to the bathroom for five minutes. They just let it open, right? He goes in, he searches whatever, makes sure the volume's down, because that would get him in trouble, puts it on full screen, and waits for the, the professor to turn around and start writing something, and then runs back to his seat. And sure enough, a couple minutes later, the kid comes back down, sits down, like literally jumps in his seat because he's so just shocked to see what's on his screen. Quickly, like, this he doesn't even tab out of it. He just slams his laptop shut and, like, looks behind him with the most embarrassed-looking face ever. And yeah, the, this... No, not the spoiled kid, sorry. Ben's reign of terror. You might be thinking, okay, this is as far as he goes. There is no way that he would dare mess with the teacher's computer. This is where you are wrong. So at this point, Ben is like, stage one of trolling. Mess with my computer and make people look at it. Stage two of the epic troll. Get other people's computers when they're not looking. But the final stage, the god tier stage of my epic troll prank, whatever, is messing with the one, the only, the teacher's computer. So yes, here's how the plan was to go, right? Or here's the little bit of details that are important. Next class, it was the, the teacher was gonna be projecting stuff on their screen, right? It was gonna be like a PowerPoint slideshow presentation, whatever. The teacher's up at the front of the class. And I think Ben kind of comes up with this idea on the spot because he wouldn't have known beforehand. Anyways, the teacher's up at the front of the class. This is a new day, by the way, like one or two days pass. And the teacher is getting their, plugging in their computer, calling tech support, being like, how do I turn on this Apple product or whatever? And uh, sure enough, gets the PowerPoint slides open. And then the teacher says, hold on, like, class, stay here. I'm going to go for a couple minutes. I have a handout that I want to, like, get, like, that I want to hand out to you guys. However, I just sent it to the printer now, so I'm going to go pick it up. So the teacher gets up and leaves. And Brent looks, and he sees Ben stand up. And Brent puts two and two together relatively quickly, realizing that Ben's probably about to do something with the teacher's exposed laptop. And Brent is thinking, dude, you cannot be serious. Like, you're going to get in a lot of trouble looking that stuff up on your own computer. Nevertheless, the teacher's computer, like, that's going to be like 10x the punishment of whatever already been a pretty substantial punishment. Because the school is not messing with kids looking at really sus stuff, you know, or really weird or gross or whatever, graphic, etc. stuff on their own computers. They would be pretty mad at least. <laughs> they would at least be very mad if, like, you did it on your own computer. So they're really going to be mad if you mess with the teacher's computer. But anyways, Ben just couldn't help himself. Because it was the epic, it was the troll of the century in his mind. And uh, everyone kind of knew what was happening or what was about to happen because he'd been, you know, pranking them for the last couple days. So they watch as Ben walks up to this professor's computer. And since the thing is air playing right now, everybody sees what's going on, right? And basically what Ben is trying to do is it is a slideshow presentation. So there are multiple slides. There's like 20 slides or something. What Ben wants to do is he wants to make a 21st slide or he wants to put like 17th out of 20 or whatever. So he makes another slide. So now instead of 20 slides, there are 21 slides. And now he moves everything from the 17th slide over, bumps it over once. So now there's a blank slide at the 17th position because he wants to make sure it's shown, but shown randomly. And that's when he goes on the internet and looks up something, a bad video, right? A video that you wouldn't want to play. And he embeds it into the slide. And he's in the middle of messing with the teacher's computer when the door opens and Brent looks over to see the teacher walking through the door with a whole stack of papers, which he's going to give out to all the kids, right? And it's just like stops in his tracks and sees Ben on his computer doing who knows what. 
And this is where Brent knows that the, the, the prankster, the epic troll man, Ben himself, has finally messed up and messed up for good. So the teacher immediately says, hey, like, what are you doing up here, Ben? And Ben's like, oh, uh, you know. And he, because, like, remember, it's projecting on the screen what he's doing. So everyone is already abuzz talking because they're watching as this kid goes on some not-so-great websites. I don't know how he got around the school firewall. I think he just found websites that were obscure enough that they weren't in the block list. And I think the, the school's firewall was definitely not sophisticated enough to catch those as well. They probably just looked up the major do-not-watch sites, right? The, the major not-safe-for-work ones. They slapped them on a ban list or whatever. Something very rudimentary like that. But so quickly, Ben realizes that all what is being shown is projected. So he quickly just tabs out to like the first slide. He's like, oh, nothing. Your computer was just having a bug. So I came up to fix it. And the professor's like, okay, thanks, I guess. And at this point, remember, the professor had just been looking at Ben. He had not been looking at the screen on the whiteboard, which had been projected the entire time. Because if he did, he would have seen the not-so-safe-for-work video being integrated into the slideshow. However, Ben was in a very bad position. Because before, unless someone ratted him out, which was actually kind of unlikely, um, the video would have just played naturally when the professor was going through the slides. The professor would have thought, oh my god, I got hacked or whatever. Oh no, hackers, they're coming for me. And everyone in the class would have laughed and freaked out because this very inappropriate video would have been playing in the middle of the teacher's slideshow. But now, but now, Ben is in trouble. Because when that video plays, and it is going to play, right? When that video plays... He's going to know that Ben was up there messing with his computer. So the, the professor, the teacher, might have been kind of old and not great with technology, but he would have been able to put two and two together and realize that, yes, it was Ben who was up there. Because it can't just be a, a, a random occurrence that Ben happens to be doing something to his computer, and then his slideshow gets messed up with a really, like, graphic video or whatever, right? So Ben sits back down. And, tr and Brent looks over, because Brent knows that Ben is screwed at this point. And Ben just has, like, the most uncomfortable, nervous, anxious look on his face that, you know, that Ben has ever seen, well, that Brent has, like, ever seen him look like. This kid's always very, like, calm, cool, collected, or having a smirk on his face. Very just kind of like, oh, I'm in charge of everything, man, type attitude, right? But no, for once, this kid's about to be humbled. And not just humbled, he's about to get in big trouble, because for once, besides the time when he pulled down the kid's pants and got in trouble, this is going to be a prank that, once again gets him in big trouble. Unlike all the other ones that he's able to get away with, he won't get away with it this time. It felt like an eternity. The teacher was going through the slides incredibly slowly. It had been 20 minutes and they had only gotten through eight slides. And I think actually like Ben was hoping that they'd run out of time before they went through all the slides. And that is until the teacher says, okay, slides, uh, these slides actually will go by pretty quickly. He literally says, oh, these other slides will go by quickly. And he does. He goes through them like one slide per minute because there's only a few bullet points. The first ones were really dense and they had a lot of information. The next ones were very, very like they had a question on the board and then the answer was on the next slide and it was like a one sentence answer. So eventually it was the 16th slide and you could almost hear a buzz in the room because everybody knew what was on the 17th slide. And everyone was looking at each other, and everyone was looking at Ben, and Ben was practically sweating bullets at this point. And that's when they all look as the professor slash teacher, I guess it's eighth grade, so it'd be teacher, brings his hand down, brings his finger down to click on the arrow button to go to the next slide. His finger makes contact with the button. The electrical sur the current goes through the CPU, the zero or the ones are executed, and then boom, the slide goes to the next one. It goes to the 17th slide, and the embedded video starts playing on autoplay. And the teacher is like, what is this? And the whole class is like, oh my, it is like the craziest atmosphere ever. And Brent is just like, oh my God. And the teacher is like, someone come up here and help me turn this off. And I think Ben is trying to save his face. So he's like, oh, I'll, I'll come up and help. And the teacher's like, 
looks at him with this look of, I know what you did, but I need you to help you, right? I need you to help me. So Brent comes up, or Ben comes up, not Brent, sorry. Ben comes up, quickly turns it off. It's like, oh man, I don't know how this happened. I think you got hacked or something. And the teacher's like, no, I know exactly how this happened. And Ben just looks up at him with the guiltiest, I just got, like, I just got exposed face you've ever seen. Yeah, and the teacher goes on to say, I know for a fact it wasn't a coincidence that you were up here, like, on my slides or whatever, and then as soon as that happens, or soon, like, right after that happens, I'm on my slides and there's some, like, inappropriate video playing. It was very clearly you. I know for a fact if we asked one of the classmates anonymously or had a poll that they would definitely say it was you. So just get, just ha- save, a, save us some time. Head up to the front office. And Ben, instead of, like, you know, pitching a fight or something or being like, hey, I didn't do it. Because I think Ben did know that if it was, like, anonymously polled, at least one person would be like, yeah, I saw the whole thing, right? At least one. And also, it was very clearly him. So we walked up. And, uh, yeah, Ben got uh, suspended for three days in school suspension. So it's not like he could be home playing video games. And he also lost his computer privileges. He lost the whole computer privileges because after he got, like, in trouble or whatever, they did, like, a, uh, they, they, like, checked his search history or something, and I think he was, like, he just handed over his computer or whatever, because I think it was, like, the Chromebooks that were, like, half computer, like, half school, half yours, and then you get them when you graduate or whatever, and so, yeah, they saw what else he was looking up, and he lost his computer privileges for the, for the rest of the year. So whenever he had to have, like, essays in, like, English class, he had to write them out by hand, dude. He literally had to write them out by hand. And whenever they had stuff like that that was, like, needed a computer, bro was just out of luck. It was real tough. Yeah, moral of the story is don't do this stuff in class, Click on the video on on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a good day because today I have a story of betrayal. Today, I have a story that is probably the biggest emotional roller coaster I will ever take you on with any of my stories ever. This is probably one of the best and the most interesting and at the end, one of the saddest and most unfortunate stories I have ever told. So I suggest that, you know, you find somewhere comfortable, maybe turn on a video game or start doing some artwork or something or do something because this is the quite going to be quite the experience. Subscribe if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted the story, Kevin. So Kevin was dating this girl, Sarah. Sarah and Kevin had been dating for four years. At the time of this story, Kevin was a senior in high school. They started dating at the very end of eighth grade. Back then, Kevin and Sarah were very different people. Kevin and Sarah were, you know, they were both very young, They were, you know, very happy. They were full of life and all of that good stuff. And Kevin had more or less changed for the better, I would say. He described himself as becoming kind of more responsible, a bit more confident, a bit less juvenile. Um, However, he still kind of said that he tried to keep his fun side. He tried to keep like, you know, try to keep that good side of him. However, over those four years, Kevin saw a change in his girlfriend, Sarah, a change for the worst, unfortunately. Sarah kind of, you know, developed the mean girl's personality. Sarah didn't really care about any of that stuff when they first met in eighth grade. But over the years of high school, you know, Sarah found a clique of girls and those clique of girls kind of, you know, built her, you know, built her down in a sense. And she built them down and they definitely didn't build her up or I guess tear her down. You can't, you didn't build her down, but Essentially, right, Kevin noticed that over time, you know, Sarah became more and more caught up in, you know, drama and stuff that was really just unnecessary and petty, and that Sarah would, you know, start to talk more and more, you know, harshly about her friends, the people that Kevin thought, you know, that saw, that Kevin saw her hang out with all the time, and really just kind of become more cruel and mean. That's something that just happens sometimes in high school. High school is a tough time, and, you know, Sometimes, you know, people fall for the allure of being popular at the expense of their, you know, their soul in a sense. And that's a bit of an exaggeration because, dude, it's high school. After high school, a lot of people become chill again. 
But, you know, Kevin was starting to feel, you know, a little strain in their relationship. You know, Sarah, would, you know, they would get into more fights and arguments. However, Sarah, which Kevin assumed was just to make sure that she saved face with, you know, kind of her popularity and status, because Kevin was a somewhat popular football guy in the grade, that Sarah would refuse for them to ever break up. And Kevin never made an actual, like, attempt to break up. He kind of just assumed that before they went off to college, that they would be all set. Not that they'd be all set, but they would mutually agree to go to different places because they were not planning on going to the same college. And so Kevin was like, you know what? I'm not going to break up yet. Like, this is fine. I still enjoy spending time with her, et cetera, like that. This whole story, that was a bit of backstory. This whole story starts one Friday night. So anyways, Kevin gets back home from school. He just finished up, you know, a lot of his college apps. He's feeling good because this is fall of his senior year. And he just finished up a lot of his applications out to college, a few more to go, but he's feeling good. And he's ready to really just, you know, have a lot of uh, rest and relaxation. And he gets a text message from one of his friends, and we'll just call the friend Ben. And his friend Ben is like, bro, my parents are out for the week. I got the house to myself. I'm having a pretty crazy rager over at my house tonight. Uh, You know, party starts at nine, goes till when the last person leaves. I'd love for you to show up. And, you know, Kevin responds, yeah, dude, you know, of course, love to go. Like, yeah, that sounds great. And, you know, Kevin, you know, he's a little excited. He's going to be able to see his friends again. I mean, he's seen his friends, but, you know, see them in a more, in a less formal, like, setting, like school or something like that. So Kevin gets all ready and, you know, he gets his stuff together and, you know, he gets in his car and he drives over to the party and he gets there around 930, 945. And, you know, he's greeted at the door by Ben, his friend. And Ben's like, dude, Kevin so excited for you to make it like ah oh, this is great you like welcome uh, like come on in he's like oh yeah your girlfriend sarah's here too and he's like oh really and he's like yeah she kind of just showed up and that was a little weird to kevin because kevin sent her a text yo you going to ben's party and she said no so you know kevin goes in there starts talking to people and sees sarah and goes up to her and he's like hey like i didn't think you were coming and she's like well you know i'm allowed to change my mind am i not and kevin's like yeah, like, of course you're allowed to change your mind. Like, of course. I just thought you would tell me because, like, it's kind of implied that I was coming. And she's like, yeah, well, I decided to come and here we are, so might as well enjoy it. And Kevin's like, all right, yeah, that's fine. I'm enjoying myself. And then, you know, Kevin and Sarah were kind of standing there. And it was, by the way, this was a very big house. That is an important detail. This kid had, like, pretty pretty loaded parents, so they had a pretty big, crazy house, like a backyard with a pool and all that stuff. And, you know, Kevin and Sarah were kind of standing there, and Sarah's like, uh, can you go, like, talk to your friends or something? I want to, like, walk around and talk to people. Kevin's like, well, I mean, I could walk around with you. And Sarah's like, you know how that never works with my friends? You know how us never works, like, in a group, like my friends and you? It just doesn't mix that well. Uh, you have plenty of friends here. Why don't you go off and talk to them? Kevin was a little bit like, okay, whatever, like, fine. So Kevin's like, all right, well... That's fine. If you didn't want me here in the first place, you should have told me. And Sarah's like, ah, that's not what I said. I just said I wanted to hang out with my friends. Is that so terrible? Is that so bad of me? And Kevin's like, stop overreacting. It's whatever. Fine, I'll I'll go. That makes you happy. And she's like, well, it does because I like seeing my friends. So Kevin goes over and he talks to some of his guys and, you know, He's like, yeah, so this is uh, like, this is like, how's it going, everyone? How are college apps? All that kind of stuff. And they were like, dude, it's crazy. Like, this is ridiculous. I don't know why it's so hard. I don't know. Stuff like that. And, you know, that's when Kevin sees his his older brother, older by six months, right? Mike walk in as well. So Mike is the older brother. However, since there's only like a six, seven month differential, they're in the same grade. They just don't share a lot of classes. So Mike walks in. Kevin's like, hey, what's good, Mike? Mike's like, hey, Kevin, didn't know you'd be coming here tonight. He's like, yep, no, I'm here. So Mike walks in and Mike kind of has a different friend group. Kevin and Mike are like, they're close and they're, they're, I mean, they're cool enough at the home, right? But they just hang out with different people, but they are brothers, right? They are biological brothers. They have that kind of instinct with each other. Like, yeah, they're brothers. Just that's an important detail for later on. Maybe you, maybe you figured out a few context clues from the thumbnail, this video, but anyways, right? So, you know, Mike goes in and just disappears in the party and more and more people start like showing up. They start piling in. The party starts getting denser. There's like a lot of people in every single room. And that's when, like, Kevin, you know, goes to the bathroom, and that's, you know, he when he's done in the bathroom, he opens it up, and his friend Ben is at the door. He's like, dude. And Kevin's like, what? 
he's like, dude, like, I don't know. There's like something really weird going on. And Kevin's like, bro, like what's going on? Because at first Kevin thought like, oh, maybe someone brought something they shouldn't have here. Or maybe there's like a fight breaking out or something that, you know, since he's kind of a bigger guy, he'd be able to help and go handle. And he goes up, he's like, dude, what is it? I'll help. And, you know, Ben's like, bro, this is kind of weird. Like, I don't want you to get the wrong message from this. Like, I'm just looking out for you. He's like, are you, Mike, your brother and your girlfriend, are they like, are they like close or something? And Kevin's like, I mean, not really. I mean, I, I mean, she's come over to my house like twice and they've talked a little bit, but, and and Ben's like, well, I don't know. They're just talking a lot right now. It's kind of weird. Like, it's just a little weird. I, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. And Kevin's like, ah, well, I appreciate, look, I appreciate you looking out for me. But look, that's my brother. You know, that's my girlfriend. I, they probably are just talking about me or something, like talking about how I'm such like an idiot or some kind of conversation like that. I mean, that's a pretty standard affair. I appreciate you coming over and like making sure everything was okay, though. Like, you're a good host, Ben. Go back and have fun. And Ben's like, okay, oh, sure. You know, you, your wish is my command. I'll go back and have fun. So Kevin doesn't really think anything of that at all. And he goes back around and he's talking to his friends and, you know, life is good for about another hour. And that's when Ben comes up to him again. And it looks like Ben saw a freaking ghost. Like his face is all white and freaked out. And Kevin's like, bro, what happened? And Ben's like, dude, I, 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 I and Kevin's like, bro, spit it out. Just tell me, like, what, what do you need help with? And Kevin's like, uh, uh. Uh, or Ben's like, uh, I, uh, and Kevin's like, dude, come on, like, you're starting to worry me. And Ben turns to one of, like, the friends next to Kevin. He's like, can I talk to you for a second? And, you know, Kevin turns to his friend. He's like, dude, what? And his friend's like, dude, I'll figure out what's going on with Ben. I'll be right back. So Ben takes Kevin's friend aside, and he's, like, whispering to him. And Kevin's friend, who he's talking to, his, like, mouth is, like, just drops. And Kevin's like, bro, spit it out. Tell me, why do you need to go around telling other, like, this is, so Ben and the friend come back, and the friend's like, ooh. And Kevin's like, bro, spit it out. Is it really that hard? Just tell me what's good. And, you know, the friend is like, okay. So what Ben thinks he saw, and then Ben, like, speaks up. He's like, fine, like, this is weird, but I, I don't know. I just wanted to, I, I, I just need to talk to someone about this. And Kevin's like, what? He's like, I don't know. There's a rumor that, you know, your girlfriend was going around making out with this guy. And Kevin's like, what? And Ben's like, dude, and the rumor is it was Mike, your brother. And Kevin then starts laughing. He's like, all right, man, I don't know who's like peddling these rumors, but that's comical. That's freaking comical. Look, I know my brother. If I have a girl, like we we got a bro code, right? You know, if we're in a relationship, they're not going to sneak in. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like, you know, we have a home together. We need to share a house for at least the next year till we go off to college. He's not going to want that like terrible energy. He's not going to want to disrupt the family just for like a little, a, a, a peck on the cheek. Who? No, that's ridiculous. And like Ben and like, is like, dude, I don't know there wasn't one person who told me that. Like, it was multiple people. Like, the first person that told me, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. But then more people started telling me that there's, like, a video going around, too, and that I don't even know. And Kevin's like, all right, well, I appreciate you, like, coming here and, like, tell me about this rumor. I will figure it out, and I will, you know, stomp the rumor out. It's not true. I can tell you that. I'm just going to go find Sarah or Mike and talk to them, and they're going to find it ridiculous. So Kevin, you know, starts walking around. He starts checking from room to room. He goes in the backyard, the pool area. There's a ton of people out there just having a good time. He looks around, and for the life of him, he can't find Sarah or Mike. He goes upstairs, starts looking through. And while he, you know, isn't supposed to be going through, like, the bedrooms or whatever, you know, sometimes you got to check that, you know, hey, man, people do people things. Checking the bedrooms, nothing's in there. He's like, wow, like, did these guys, like... Where are they? So he sends a text to Mike. He's like, yo, where are you at? And Mike responds almost right away, home. And Kevin's like, dude, it's like 1130. Why do you leave early? He's like, just did. And he's like, okay. He sends a text to Sarah saying, hey. And Sarah doesn't respond. And after like five minutes, Kevin calls Sarah and it rings out and she doesn't respond. And he's like, what? Like, this is really weird. 
So Kevin, like, goes back downstairs. He finds Ben, the host of the party. He's like, dude, I don't like Kevin or Mike are here. And Ben's like, bro, I hate to do be the guy, but, like, I'm hearing more and more. Apparently there's, like, a video going around. I don't know. And, Kev- and Kevin's like, bro, okay, look, it didn't happen. I, I guess I can, like, tell you a bit. Like, I-, I don't know how else to say it, but it just didn't happen. Like, I know my brother... I know my girlfriend, like, she she can be a little shady sometimes, but the two of them, I know them both well enough that that did not happen. Whatever video was probably some girl that looked like my girlfriend and someone who looked like my brother. Look, my girlfriend has blonde hair. My brother has brown hair. You have two faces into each other. You just see blonde hair and brown hair. People are going to come up with things, right? She's a popular girl in the school. I'm a guy on the football team. That would be scandalous. Of course they'd want to make that something, right? It's definitely not. I appreciate you coming to me, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should just go home. I mean, Max, or Mike, not Max. Mike is back home. I'm just going to go talk to him there. I'm going to tell him about this ridiculous rumor. We'll probably have a few laughs over it, maybe play a few rounds of cod or something, and just call it a night. Like, you're having a great party. I don't want to kill the vibe. I think I'm just going to leave. And Ben's like, all right, man, well, if, if anything actually happens, like, I'll be sure to hit you up. I'll be sure that you're the first one that I would tell. I, like, I, I agree with you. This seems pretty unlikely, but I've just been told by so many people, it's just really weird, man. Mike's, Kevin's like, and once again, I, pre- I appreciate that, right? You know, have a good party. Keep being a host. Thanks for having me over. I'm going to go back home. So Kevin gets in his car, and he just has a weird vibe. Because, I mean, yes, he doesn't believe that it's even possible that his girlfriend or his brother would do anything like this at all. But he's just kind of like, I don't know. So many people start saying stuff. He's like, you know, you think you know people, but you never really know. But Kevin's like, no, no, this is ridiculous. Like, first of all, if there's a video... Why didn't Ben get it? If everyone says that there's a video, why didn't anyone show Ben? Because if Ben saw the video, he would have told me. So this is ridiculous. So Kevin drives back home, pulls into the uh, parking garage, parking garage, pulls into like kind of the parking lot, gets out and sees the light in his brother's room still on or is on. So he, you know, opens the door, goes inside and his parents are like, how's it going? Kevin's like, oh, pretty good. I'm just back. And they're like, you're back early because Kevin's like, I'm going to be gone for a while. He's like, yeah, I don't know wasn't feeling it tonight, and they're like, all right, well, you know, just let us know if you want to do anything, or we're going to be going to bed soon if you need anything, son, and he's like, no, I'm pretty good, so Kevin goes upstairs, goes into his room, throws his, like, wallet and keys or whatever into his room, and then goes over to Mike's room and knocks on the door, and Mike opens it, he's like, yo, what's up, and uh, Kevin's like, so, hey, there's just this, like, there's just, there's just this funny thing I wanted to tell you about, and Mike looks, like, visibly nervous. And that, like, that made Kevin feel weird. He's like, why is my brother geeking out right now? That makes absolutely no sense. This is, this is weird. <laughs> this is making me uncomfortable, but whatever. He's geeking out for some reason, but w- fine. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe he's just worried about stuff. So he goes in, and he's like, dude, Mike, you're not going to believe this. Ben came up to me. And he says that all these people have claimed to see you and my girlfriend making out, right? And that there's a video going around. And and Kevin's like, yeah, it's it's the craziest thing ever. I thought it was pretty funny and I'd tell you about it. And Kevin just looks at Mike's face and Mike is not making eye contact with him. And that's immediately when Kevin knew that something was messed up. That something was wrong. Because his brother was not making eye contact. I mean, I don't make eye contact with people all the time, right? But his brother... His brother was avoiding eye contact. He was minimal response. And then Kevin is kind of like, oh, that's just a story, right? That's, that's just like a little, little funny rumor going around. And Mike looks up. And when they make eye contact, Kevin knows for a fact it is not a rumor, it is not a joke, and it was legit. And Kevin doesn't say anything. Because he's just like, holy, oh my. Like, there's no way. And Mike's like, bro, like, I didn't want you to find out like this. Like, I know that, like, you and Sarah broke up two months ago, and it's still tough. And, like, even if you have been broken up for years, I should have never done anything with her. Look, I broke the bro code, even though you guys aren't dating anymore, and it's been a little while. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done anything. That's, that's on me. I don't know how to make it up to you. And Kevin's like, wait broke up? Mike's like, yeah, you and Sarah broke up two months ago. And Mike's like, oh, says who? And Mike's like, says Sarah. Oh. 
says, says Sarah. And Kevin and Mike just look at each other. And Kevin's like, so you did make out with Sarah at the party. Mike's like, I did, but even though it was still wrong, I thought that you guys had broken up. You know, that would still be messed up, bro. Like, I'm sorry. I was not thinking straight. You know, she came on to me. She was very, not aggressive, but she was, I mean, she was, she was insistent, right? You know, and I thought that like, oh, well, you guys have broken up, so it doesn't matter, but it still matters. And Ke Kevin's like, bro, we've not broken up. She's not broken up with me. I've not broken up with her. And Mike's like, no, I mean, she's told me for two months. She told me two months ago, you guys broke up. And she reminded me today that you guys have not, like, have been completely broken up and are pretty separate. Kevin's like, what? And, and Kevin texts his friend Ben. And he's like, hey, Ben, like, I just talked to my brother. It was true. Does anyone else think that Sarah and I have broken up? So Ben calls him. He's like, dude, I'm so sorry. And he's like, I don't even want to hear about it. I just want to know answers. And Kevin's like, Ben, I need you to ask around if people think Sarah and I have broken up or not. So Ben is like, all right, gets back to him like 15 minutes later. He's like, dude, every single person I've talked to hasn't heard a single thing about this quote unquote breakup. Dude, you guys broke up? Is that why she was kissing your brother? And Ben's, Kevin's like, no, no, we have not broken up yet. But she told my brother that, you know, she did. And, you know, Kevin looks at Mike. He's like, dude, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can trust you on that. Like, did she really say that? Or are you just saying that to save face? And Mike's like, dude, it was messed up no matter what, what I did, but I would never do it if I thought you were still in a relationship. It was messed up in general because you were in a relationship before, and I'm sure that's breaking bro code, and I'm sorry, and we'll always have a bit of tension over that, but I did not do it because, like, I, I, I would never do it if I thought you were in a relationship and that I thought that I could harm that relationship. You got to believe me on this. And Kevin just looks at Mike, and he's like, bro, I do? If I find out you're lying here, it's done. Kevin, and Mike's like, that's totally fair, man. That's totally fair. Kevin's like, damn. And Kevin just is like, all right, I need some time in my room. Mike's like, all right, just let me know. So Kevin goes back to his room, just sits in his chair, and just is thinking right now. Because right now, right, you know, yes, his girlfriend of four years just, you know, decided to make out with his brother. And she was the one that was pushing it, and she was the one who told him and only him they broke up two years ago. And then immediately Kevin's like, oh no, there's a video apparently. So he calls up Ben again and it's like one in the morning. Ben's like, yo, what's up? He's like, hey, do you know anything else about that video? And Ben's like, yeah, bad news. Like apparently like, you know, that girl, you know, uh, Stacy. And Kevin's like, yeah, Sarah's, Sarah's annoying friend. Yeah. He's like, dude, she filmed the whole thing. She was like giggling or whatever. She put it on Snapchat. Dude, that thing was screen recorded so many times. It's sent around everywhere. Like, bro, it's bad. Kevin's like, there's no way. Like, there's no way, dude. Like, wh why me? What did I do? Why? Right? So immediately, Kevin's like, all right, well, let me just text Sarah. Let me just get her side on this because I don't know what side she could have had. But yeah, let me figure out what her side is. And, you know, Kevin goes on Snapchat to go see, like, is she on? Was she on, like, a minute ago or something? And he sees on one of, this, one of these girls' private stories that he happens to be, like, kind of friends with in his, in his class, he clicks in. It was the video. That video was spreading like crazy. It was ridiculous. And, you know, Kevin watched it, like, 20 times. And it was heartbreaking every single time. It didn't get easier. In fact, every time it probably got worse because the first few times it felt like, oh, well, this isn't a real thing. But no, it was 100% real. And Kevin's just sat there and like put down his phone for a second. It's like, do I even really want to know why? Like, do I even want to like, should I just like send a text saying, yo, we're done and just never talk to her again? Or do I want to like put myself through figuring out why and then breaking up with her because this is ridiculous. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Kevin down below. I don't normally use the names from the stories as the secret word, but today we are, so comment Kevin if you made it this far into the video. And if you wanna support the channel and help the channel out, all you gotta do is at some point, maybe after this video, or maybe later when you're playing a video game, drawing some artwork, going to, or maybe when you're about to go to sleep and you need help going to sleep, Sit down and watch a bunch of these videos, maybe two of these videos, three, four, five, however many videos in a row. 
And make sure to go down and comment down below what you do while you watch these videos. And also, how many videos have you watched today? I, I really want to know. I'll heart a bunch of comments. I'll reply to a bunch saying thank you. And just, uh, just a big thank you to everyone for supporting the channel recently. Um, I got a bit of an upgrade in the gear I'm using. I got a better phone. I make my videos on my phone. Mic's a little bit better. I think we're doing 1080p for most of my videos instead of 720. The gameplay isn't looped anymore. We're, we're getting somewhere. Anyways, let's get back to the story. Things only continue to get crazier, so make sure to stick around. So anyways, Kevin calls up Ben, and it's like 1.30 in the morning, and Ben's like, yo, what's up? And Kevin's like, hey, like, is your party kind of done? He's like, yeah, everyone's gone. I'm just cleaning up. Kevin's like, can I come over? And Ben's like, oh, dude, like the party's done. He's like, no, just like you and me talking. And Ben's like, oh, yeah, no, of course. Come over, man. So anyways, Kevin, you know, walks downstairs and his dad's like getting a glass of water. He's like, you're going out now? And Kevin's like, yeah, I got some stuff I got to deal with. Don't worry, I'll be back, not doing anything bad. And, and Kevin's dad's like, all right, I trust you. Good grades, you're a good kid, and, like whatever. Kevin gets in his car, drives over to Ben's house. Walks in the walks into Ben like the front door is greeted by Ben. There's a bunch of like trash everywhere, red solo cups broken all over the place. Whatever, a bunch of garbage, whatever. Right, he's cleaning up, and Kevin's like, "All right, well, you know, I, I need some advice. We gotta talk about this." So Kevin fills in Ben the part of the story that Ben doesn't already know, and you know Ben is like, "Dude, that's messed up," and Kevin's like, "I don't know why that happened." I don't know why, out of the blue, instead of breaking up with me first, she decides to convince my brother that we broke up and then seduce him, right? And then she must have known that her friend was taking a video. In fact, I don't think her friend would have taken a video and posted it without her explicit, not just consent, but, you know, her telling her to do so. Kevin's like, this is the mastermind work of Sarah, bro. I've been telling you for a while that she's been getting meaner and meaner and meaner. And bro, this is, this is just what, this is like the amalgamation of all that meanness and cruelness. And, and why? What, why? What did I do? I've been, look, I'm not the perfect boyfriend. We get in a fight sometimes, but I'm fine. I don't do anything. I've never cheated on her. I don't even like, I don't even like have that many friendships with girls anymore because I didn't want her to th like think of anything like that. And Ben's like, dude, this is like a shock to me as well. And Ben's like, bro, look, I know it's going to be easier for you to just say we're done and move on with it. But I know for a fact that long term, you're always going to wonder. You're going to want to know why and it's going to suck now. But trust me, future you will be happy that you did it. You need to ask her why. So all of a sudden, Kevin's like, all right, fine, yeah, okay, you're right, you're right, I'm going to call her. So Kevin calls Sarah's phone, once again, no response. And Ben's like, dude, she's probably not up, it's one in the morning, but, you know, you probably have to, like, confront her tomorrow. So, you know, Kevin goes back home, and, you know, he gets into his bed, and he just can't really fall asleep for, like, an hour. He's just sitting there thinking about literally everything, replaying everything that like has ever happened with him and Sarah. And also towards the end of it, starting to feel like, you know, remembering the good moments, man. Remembering not just all the moments where, you know, her personality slowly devolved into what it is now, or all the fights and disagreements, or all the times that he didn't feel like, you know, this was a relationship he wanted to be in. Instead, he was thinking about the time, the very end of eighth grade, where the two of them, after being friends for a while, decided to take it the next step, decided to kind of be the power couple of the grade, and started freshman year, you know, with a bang. That summer before freshman year was like one of the greatest summers of his life. It was the first time really having a real-time girlfriend, having someone else in his life to lean off of, to grow, to be a bigger, different, better person. And, you know, he remembers like, you know, there was an ice cream place that they used to always go to. And they didn't really go to it last summer, and they went to it less the summer before and slightly more, but still less than the first summer three summers ago. So every summer they go to the place less and less. And when he woke up the next day, you know, he texted Sarah, meet me at the ice cream spot, you know, the place that they used to go to all the time, right? The place he used to go to all the time when they were, like, first dating, right? And Sarah responds to him, I'm not taking it. Like, I'm, she responds, I'm not doing anything a cheater says. And Kevin's like, what? Me? So anyways, he responds back. He said, that's hilarious. That's really rich coming from you. And Sarah says, you know, that video 
of me and your brother like making out is going everywhere. Everyone's going to see it. Everyone's going to see you hu- you humiliated by your own brother, right? Your girlfriend, the power couple, right? You know what? Yeah, you weren't good enough and I went for your brother. And my and Kevin literally responds like, "Why?" And Sarah's like, "You know, just to make things even. Don't think I don't know about Claire." Kevin's like, "What?" He literally responds, "What?" He's like, "Claire confront confided in me." two months ago that you and her have had a fling, a secret fling for the last two years. You know, I knew that something was up for a while, but when I heard that, I knew that I needed to get my revenge and I got it. And Kevin is like, Claire? What? So Claire was a friend of Sarah's, right? They were kind of friends, right? And Kevin really only had one interaction with her. When, he, when she was hanging out with Sarah, they had a nice little conversation or whatever. So Kevin is like, what? So Kevin actually still has one kind of like female friend because he had to cut off most of them when he's with Sarah because, you know, he didn't want her to be jealous or anything. So he hits up that friend and we're going to call her Kate. And, you know, he hits up Kate. He's like, dude, like, I'm in a crazy situation. Can you call? So he calls her up. He explains everything. And the thing is, Kate is actually somewhat friends with Claire or at least knows people who are good friends with Claire. And so he's like, hey, I don't know, like, I don't, I, like, trust me, I did not cheat on my girlfriend with Claire. I've spoken to her once. This is ridiculous. So Kate's like, yeah, sure, I can get, I can get back to you in a little bit. So two hours later, Kate texts with all caps, pick up the phone. So Kevin's like, ah, oh, shoot, okay, okay. There's like four mess, missed calls. He calls her back. Kate explains that, you know, Kate went to one of her good friends who happened to be friends with Kate. Um, And that friend that is friends with Kate confronted Kate on this, and Kate kind of confessed to everything. Kate had two motives for lying to Sarah. Because, yes, no, Kevin and Kate had never had a fling at all. But Kate had two motives to lie to Sarah. The first motive is that she didn't like, you know, how Sarah's attitude was changing and kind of the position of power she had. And that she, she thought that, you know, if she toppled their relationship, Sarah and Kevin, that there would be a power vacuum and that she would basically be able to fill it. The second thing is that she didn't want to fill it alone, the high school queen and king, whatever power vacuum. She, in only one conversation, basically fell in love with Sarah's boyfriend, Kevin, and thought that if she could split them up, that she could truly then like seduce him and then she would one be like the queen of the high school for the rest of the year as well as have Kevin be like her power couple. And Kevin is like, bro, this is freaking high school. Literally, who cares? But you know, Claire, uh, Kate's like, dude, I'm so sorry. This is ridiculous. And you know, Kevin's like, all right, well, do you have that like, conf- like is there, is, can your friend talk to Sarah and be like my witness, that's true. And Kate's like, yeah, it might take a little bit of convincing, but I think that can happen. So anyways, right, you know, Monday, Monday rolls around, they go back to school. And you know, they don't have recess anymore, but they have like a break period. So Kevin texts uh, uh, Sarah saying, we need to talk. And And he said, let's meet up in person. Let's not do this over text. And she says, fine, but on my terms. Kevin's like, all right. And Sarah says, we have to discuss everything and you have to like apologize for cheating. And he said, we'll discuss everything when we get there. He didn't say that he'd apologize for cheating, but he was bringing it. He, he was like, anything to get her in person. Kate was able to get her friend that was friends with Claire to go with uh, Kevin and to like to walk over with them, right? So Kevin, Sarah, and this friend, right? We're gonna call her Kate's friend. All sit down. And Sarah's like, oh, so you already have a new girlfriend? Kevin's like, no. Claire's, or Kate's friend, do you want to speak? Kate's friend tells Sarah everything. And Kevin watches as Sarah's face turns from smugness to, like, horror, basically. As she realizes that she's been snaked by one of her close friends for a power move. Like, this is, like, this is, like, 17th century kings, like, like, uh, sons of kings trying to fight who gets power, right? This is ridiculous stuff. And Sarah turns to Kevin and is like, I had no idea. And Kevin's like, of course you had no idea. You wouldn't have acted on it if you did. And Sarah's like, well, 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 well then, um, I guess we can all put this behind us. 
And Kevin's like, whoa, 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 Lois, this is not my Batman cup. Now he's like, whoa, whoa, hold on now. Chill out. We can put this behind us. I don't know about that. Because while it is proven now that I did not have a thing with Claire, your friend that I spoke to once, there is not only proof, but video evidence that you had a thing with my brother. And you chose my brother because you know it would, you knew it would hurt more than a random person. It would hurt more than even my closest friend. And Sarah's just kind of looking at him. And Kevin is like, Sarah, it has been four years. It has been a great, terrible, wonderful, horrible experience. It has been everything. He says, Sarah, to you four years ago when we first met, I am sorry that we have failed you. He says, Sarah, to you now, I wish you the best in life. Kevin gets up. And Sarah's like, what, are you, what do you think you're doing? What do you think we're doing? We still have fall. We still have winter. We still have spring. We only have two more semesters. We've gone four years. And you're going to end it on this? This is how you're ending it? And Kevin said, I was, wasn't the one to end anything, Sarah. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't the one to choose to do any of this. And Kevin just walks away. The aftermath is Kevin, you know, and Sarah, and they break up. You know, there's a whole ton of bickering going on with Sarah and Claire and a lot of infighting. But Kevin doesn't even pay attention to any of that. He doesn't involve himself and he doesn't even know what happened because he doesn't care. All Kevin cares about is finishing up, you know, a really good high school football year you know, applying to colleges, he got into one he wanted to, and having a good time with his friends. And, uh, you know, he had no more relationships or anything like that. And by the end of the year, when they were having their kind of last moments as a class, you know, Sarah went up to him. And, you know, he was, and Kevin's like, hello there. They had not spoken really since that day for like months. They had like seen each other and kind of like nodded or something. And, you know, Sarah was like, didn't say sorry, didn't say anything like that. Sarah just went up to him and said, do you remember at the end of eighth grade, you know, when you asked me out? And Kevin's like, yeah, no, I do remember that. And Sarah's like, you remember how, you know, you started choking on something midway through asking me out? Kevin's like, bro, that's embarrassing. Sarah's like, I know, that's why I'm saying it. And you remember that ice cream place we used to go to? And Kevin was like getting really wistful at this point. He's like, yeah, Sarah, that was the best, that was the best summer I've ever had. Sarah's like, me too. Sorry I went down the way it did. And Kevin's like, I'm sorry I did too. He said, hey, have fun in college. Like, I'm sure you'll have a good time on the East Coast. And Sarah's like, well, have fun down South, you know. Uh, I heard it's pretty warm down there, but, uh, you know, stay in touch with me. Kevin and Sarah did not stay in touch, but that's just how things happen when you say stay in touch with me with people. Just a little life lesson. Most of the people in high school at the very last day, you'll say, Stay in touch with me. Oh, we're going to be best friends. No, you won't. You'll stay in touch with like three or four people. Kevin and Sarah are not close friends anymore. They're, you know, they follow each other on Instagram or something at this point. But um, their lives, which were so close together for a while, just they just never cross paths again. I mean, look, this happened like a couple years ago. They could easily cross paths again. But you understand what I'm saying. And, uh, you know, Kevin, he's in college now. You know, he's got a girlfriend who doesn't care about nonsense and is not going to cheat on him with his brother. Kevin and Mike kind of mended their relationship the summer before Kevin and Mike went off to college. There's always going to be, like, you can't change what happened in the past, but they're doing much better now. And, uh, you know, Kevin submitted the story to me, and uh, he thought it would be Click on the video on screen right now. I, I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have a story of an incredibly spoiled brat who ends up knocking out his teacher for the worst reason ever. I mean, there's never really a good reason to knock out your teacher in class, but this was just the goofiest thing ever. I know you'll enjoy this story as it's a pretty crazy spoiled kid story. So yeah, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. And of course, leave a like for your very own free nothing. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Teddy. And we're also going to call the kid in Teddy's class who is the spoiled brat. We're just going to call him a spoiled kid or a spoiled brat. Whenever I give him a name, it always gets kind of complicated. So anyways, this kid in Teddy's class was just known as the spoiled kid. He was just known as the kid 
who was just very entitled. Uh, I mean, his parents like had a lot of money. He was always given everything like that. But he just embodied being super entitled. He just embodied being super spoiled because he was super spoiled and he was super entitled. And this all started one day when there was a new girl in class. So this girl, so anyways, they, they, this is seventh grade. So they've been going to the same school with the same people forever. But whenever someone new moves into the neighborhood, they obviously join the high school. And uh, yeah, so there's a new girl who moved in over the summer and we're just gonna call her Kate because that's the name I use for basically everyone at this point uh, or any girl at this point. So yeah, Kate's the new girl. She comes in and immediately, spoil kid, who has zero charisma, or riz, as you guys might call it, has zero charisma, right, has zero play, has zero riz, he immediately decides that he's the one to make the move. So, anyways, it's like the first day of class, and, like, Kate's the new girl in the class, and it's a little tough when you're the new kid in class, because everyone else is talking to each other, everyone else knows each other, and you're kind of just chilling there, you're kind of just sitting there, kind of just twiddling your thumbs or whatever, not really sure what to do. But anyways, immediately, like, within... I don't know, as soon as, like, class began, a, uh, sorry, the spoiled kid went over and sat right next to her, which she had no problem with, because, I don't know, when I'm new and someone makes, like, a move to be friends with me, I'm very happy with that, you know? I, she probably just thought that, like, I don't know, he's being nice because he knows that I'm new. Anyways, spoiled kid says, sits down and says, hey, what's up? My name's spoiled kid. Nice to meet me. <laughs> She kind of just looks at him like, bro. And Teddy's watching the whole thing go down. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're calling subscriber Teddy. I, I don't know if I said that or not. So Teddy's watching this whole thing go down. And he's just chilling with his boys. And he's just thinking to himself, oh, no. Bro is at it again. Bro is at it again, being a menace to society and being a menace to this new girl. Poor Kate, bro. So the spoiled kid sat down. He's like, yeah, what's good? Nice to meet me. I'd be super happy to meet me too. And she's like, uh. He's like, yeah, so I just wanted to know if you wanted to go in my a car ride with me on this Friday. It was like a Monday, so he's talking about like the upcoming Friday. Implying like, do you want to basically go on a date with me? He's like, yeah, my car is pretty cool. I bet it's a little nicer than any car you've driven in, so it would be a really cool experience. It, it's a great opportunity for you. Yeah. And Kate's is kind of sitting there very awkwardly. This is like an in real life try not to cringe challenge, and she was about to lose real hard. So she's like, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I might be doing something with my parents this weekend, so it's a very nice offer. He's like, oh, okay. What about next weekend? Are you free next weekend? And she's like, um, maybe. I mean, I don't really know, but I can get back to you. He's like, that's not going to cut it, actually. I'm going to have to know right now because I have a lot of women who want to be in the car with me. Which, like, when Teddy heard this, he kind of rolled his eyes. Because he knew for a fact that the line of women... Like, he's saying that, like, the spoiled kid's saying that there's a line of women going out the door to, like, be on a date with him. When in reality, the line was zero people long. It, and it did not exist. There was no line out the door to be dating the spoiled kid. Nobody wanted to do that, bro. He has no charisma. He's got no risk. He's got no game. He's got no nothing. He's got no play. Nothing, bro. Nada. Not a single speck of that, right? So Teddy's kind of just rolling his eyes like, oh, okay, whatever, spoiled kid. Like, nice try, but she's not going to fall for it. So anyways, class begins, and, you know, spoiled kid can't be talking throughout all of class without getting kicked out by the teacher, right? But, you know, one would believe that. But the spoiled kid is, like, whispering, like, while the teacher's talking or whatever. He's like, hey, what's up, Kate? Like, I just want to say, you look really good in your dress today. The teacher's like, uh, sorry, spoil kick, you, could, could you not talk during class, please? He's like, all right, sorry, teacher. Hey, okay, I just want... He just, like, kept whispering, like, really loud. Like, you know when people whisper, but instead of going like this, they're like, hey, I'm just whispering right now. I'm like, dude, shut up. You're so loud. Just because you kind of make your voice hoarse or something, like, make it kind of rough sounding, doesn't mean you're whispering, bro. You're basically whisper yelling at me. So yeah, the spoiled kid was bas basically whisper yelling at Kate the entire time, being like, yeah, it's just some really nice shoes you got on right now. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, can you please shut the fuck? No, I was kidding. He's like, spoiled kid's like, he's like, hey, 
Can you please not interrupt class? This is the second time asking you. The third time I will ask you to step outside. Spoiled kid's like, yeah, okay. Mumbles under his breath. Whatever, dude. At this point, Teddy's just watching the most failed Riz attempt on planet Earth. This is a 0 out of 10 Riz attempt. It, it's time to just retreat. Mission failed, we'll get him next time type moment. This is not going well for the spoiled kid, which is great and all. But the spoiled kid had a lot of confidence that maybe wasn't deserved. And by maybe wasn't deserved, I mean most definitely wasn't deserved. And, uh... This story is basically a saga of the spoiled kid versus the teacher, and this is the first arc of the story, as you will see very soon. This is basically episode one of Spoiled Kid versus the Teacher. So the spoiled kid is trying to continue to talk to Kate, right? He's like, So, Kate, have you gotten any updates on next Friday? And remember, he, like, just asked her, like, 20 minutes ago, and she says, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be around next Friday, but I'll get back to you. Dude, like, how is she supposed to know at this point? She's literally been sitting in class next to you for the last 20 minutes. She's not been on her phone. She's not been home. She's not talked to anyone. Like, literally no time has passed at all. And he's like, hey, Kate, I was wondering if Friday was free again. Like, of course it's not free, bro. You just asked. Chill out. And she kind of looks at him and shakes her head like, no, I don't know. And the teacher kind of notices the spoiled kid speak again, but I think the teacher wanted the spoiled kid, gave like the spoiled kid a unspoken, like extra pass for that one. Um, but obviously if you heard him speak again, it's time to get out of there, right? So the teacher's like sp speaking, talking about something. And uh, at some point the teacher's like, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot to introduce our new student. I mean, I guess they were all new seventh graders. But, you know, Kate was the only new girl in the class who wasn't there last year. So the teacher thought it would be a good idea to introduce her in front of everyone. So the teacher's like, all right, Kate, not to, not to put too much of a spotlight on you. I know you're, you know, this is kind of stressful, new to you. But uh, if you could stand up and introduce yourself to the class. She's like, hey, guys, like, my name's, my name's Kate. Like, uh, I'm new here. I just moved here. Uh, I like, I don't know, going on hikes. Um... She just says stuff, right? And the spoiled kid speaks up. He's like, and she's going to go on a date with me this Friday or next Friday in my really cool car. And Kate just turns bright red because one, that's just not what anyone said. Actually, that's what the spoiled kid said. That is not what she agreed to or had any idea was like the deal or whatever. And also, second of all, I, I think she realized pretty quickly that being associated with the spoiled kid was not really a great way to make a first impression of people. Like, if people, like, you know, guilty by association, like, if you associate with someone or something that's not good, then you're just going to be become not good by association to that thing or person. Yeah, I think she realized pretty quickly that being associated with a spoiled kid was just going to be a really bad call because, uh, yeah, just, like, the way he acted for the last 30 minutes... Kind of gave her the like the uh, the idea that yeah that's not that's not what's, that's not what's good right so everyone goes dead silent it's not like they were talking before but you know there's kind of like a lively silence and a very awkward dead silence it went from like a normal silence to like pure silence as everyone's was like what did this kid just say the spoiled kid's like yeah uh oh you guys not hear me yeah she's going on a date with me this and next Friday my really cool car yeah. And, you know, Kate's like, well, I don't know if I agree to that. And he's like, she totally wants to, guys, as you can tell. And the teacher clearly was not looking very happy. But he once again didn't say anything because he just kind of like bit his tongue or whatever. He's like, whatever. So she sits down and he goes back to teaching. And the spoiled kid leans over. He's like, hey, Kate, I just wanted like, to make sure, like, Friday, next Friday still works with you, as you said it would. And Kate's starting to get a, no a little bit annoyed. She's like, I don't remember saying that it was okay. Like, that, I never remember saying that I wanted to go on a date with you next Friday. I don't remember saying that. He's like, what? But in this time, this, uh, the spoiled kid doesn't even start. He doesn't even whisper anymore. He just straight up is like, what? But I thought you said you wanted to go on a date. And the teacher turns around and like, spoiled kid? And they kind of have a showdown. They like they're staring at each other. They're having a showdown, and the, and the teacher's like, "Spoiled kid, I give you two warnings and let a lot of other things slip. But this is your third strike. Stand outside." Spoiled kid's like, 
but I was... Because, like, I think the spoiled kid was, like, upset because, like, he was rizzing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Kate, right, which is just not the case. He was... He was failing, bro. I don't know how else to say it. But he was like, but... But I... I, I you can't do that, teacher. No, I'm just not going to do it. Teacher's like, spoiled kid, I will give you a zero on today's participation if you don't step outside right, in, right now. And the thing is, in that class, participation was like 50% of the grade. So even losing, getting a zero even on one day, which doesn't sound that bad, actually has a bit of an impact. And the spoiled kid's like, well, I'm still staying here. And the teacher's like, you will get a zero on this month's participation, which basically meant the kid was going to get a C or below. And eventually the spoiled kid stood up and it's like, <laughs> very upset. This was the beginning of a long saga of Spoil Kid versus the teacher. Oh, yeah. Anyways, moving on to the second arc of Spoil Kid versus the teacher. There was a big test in this class. And so this is like two weeks after the Kate incident, right? Which is the very beginning of school. Actually, no, this is like a month after because it's the test, of course. So the test, like the first kind of test or whatever happens about a month into school. Um, the spoiled kid and the teacher in this time period have had a few mini spats with each other, but the first big thing was the Kate one, and the second big thing that led up to the final explosion, aka him knocking out his teacher, which we'll get to, it's pretty crazy, but the second thing that led up to that, the first thing being the Kate one, but the second thing is as follows. So they had a really massive test about a month into school, and, uh, or like, I guess a test, all tests are kind of massive. You know, if you only have a couple, only count for a lot of your grade. Anyway, so, so the spoiled kid is just not paying attention in class the whole time. He's, like, talking to this guy, like, in the back of the class. They're playing, like, I don't know, game, like, I don't know, cool math games, slither.io. Like, those kind of, you know, those kind of, like, computer games, you just, like, the quick ones. Not, like, a full intensive, like, he's gonna hop into a Call of Duty lobby or just start playing, like, I don't know minecraft or something in class like some of the minecraft kids in the previous stories have done now he's not that crazy he's not that out there but he is playing like those kind of discrete games that you just play in class like i've definitely done that a few times but you know for a fact if there's a a massive test that i'm preparing for or there's something massive that like i actually got to pay attention in class you know for a fact that i'm not going to be playing one of those little distraction games in class but sure enough the spoiled kid was doing so which, at the end of the day, I, I, in my personal opinion, I think it's his, like, he can do what he wants. But he also has to realize that he will suffer the consequences for not paying attention in class, right? So sure enough, um, he, does not, he does not pay any attention. When the teacher is doing review, like, he, the teacher is legitimately doing just review for the test at this point. So, yeah, it eventually comes to the day of the test. And the spoiled kid sits down. And he sits down next to, oh, what's it? It sits down next to uh, Teddy, actually. Remember, the subscriber who submitted the story. You can submit your own stories to my Instagram or Twitter. Just follow me there and then DM me your story. So he sits down next to Teddy. And Teddy is aware that the spoiled kid has not been in class for, like, the entire week. Or he has been in class, but he's been mentally somewhere else, right? And Teddy kind of sits down next to him. And Teddy's totally, Teddy's totally prepared. He's going to kill it or at least do all right. Like if Teddy messes up big time and freezes and screws up everything, worst comes the worst he might get a B. Like he's going to kill it either way. And uh, he sits down next to the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid is like very clearly looking over at Teddy's paper. And Teddy like looks back at him and they make eye contact. Like the spoiled kid is looking down at Teddy's paper, looks up at Teddy and Teddy's just staring him down. The spoiled kid's like, hey, hey, oops. So yeah, Teddy kind of like, moves his elbow so that it makes it very, very difficult, if not impossible, for the spoiled kid to read his answers. And the spoiled kid's like, oh, crap. So yeah, the spoiled kid goes on to not really be able to answer any of the questions correctly. Yeah, the spoiled kid just kind of like fumbles around. He's like, eh, well, maybe if I do... Wait, if this is multiple choice, can I just select all the answers and get partial credit? <laughs> Damn it. Ah, yeah. Right, so the spoiled kid just does not do well on this test. And eventually, he has to hand it in, because he's the last one in class, scribbling it down, and the teacher picks it up. And, uh, yeah, three days later, the teacher has all the tests graded, and the teacher's walking around the class, and the teacher's handing back these tests to all the students, right? So he hands them back to Teddy and his friends or whatever, and eventually gets over to the spoiled kid. And then when the spoiled kid gets it, he's like, Ah, crap, dude. 
<laughs> and sure enough, right, Spoiled Kid's like, raises his hand, and he's like, Mr. Teacher, Mr. Teacher. And the teacher turns around and is like, oh, yes. He's like, Sue, could you come over here for a second? I, I just have a question on number three. And the teacher's like, oh, okay, whatever. Teacher walks over to uh, Teddy. And, uh, not Teddy, sorry, the spoiled kid, who is sitting not next to Teddy, but close enough that Teddy can overhear what's happening. And uh, so te- so the teacher comes over to the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid's like, Hey, Mr. Teacher. So I'm not really that happy with the grade I got on the test. Mm, could you Could you help me out, maybe... Bump me up 20 or so points. And Teddy, when he overheard this, is just like, hey, yo, bro, what? You want to bump you up 20 points? Huh? You think this, do you think he just like pulls these grades out of his butt or something? You think he just like random number generates these grades? Like, bro, they're attached to something. What are you talking about? So yeah, the teacher's like, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, Spoil Kid really thought like, oh, I could just pull this off. And that's when the Spoil Kid says, well, I guess I thought you'd say that. So, Maybe this will help you reconsider. Spoiled Kid reaches into his pocket, pulls out his wallet, opens it up, and takes out a $20 bill and starts waving it around. It's like, teacher, this will be in your desk by the end of the day if you promise that you will change my grade to a 100%. Not even bumping it up, just round it up to a 100%. And the teacher's looking at him with this blank face and is like, really? You're going to bribe me for a $20 bill. You know, if someone found this out, I could lose my entire job. I could lose my entire profession for $20. And Spoiled Kid's like, yeah, it's like a whole $20. I mean, you're a teacher, so what do you get paid? Like $25 a year or something? The teacher's like, no. And Spoiled Kid's like, what? Well, it's still a really good deal, and I would totally take it if I were you. And the teacher's like, no. First of all, I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna risk my job for twenty dollars. Second of all, on the principle of the matter, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's ridiculous. You're being ridiculous. And the spoiled kid's like, what? I think the spoiled kid like was totally fine failing the test, or wasn't totally fine, but like kind of thought that like his plan B, which was bribing the teacher, was so like, oh, he got that in the bag, bro. Like he doesn't have to worry at all. But yeah, no, he does need to worry because the teacher failed him on the test and didn't take the bribe. At this point, the spoiled kid really does not like the teacher. He has major beef with the teacher. And all the next day, not the next day, but a couple days later, on that day, on what feels like a normal day, is about to be one of the craziest days in Teddy's school history. It's about to be the craziest day by far that Teddy's ever had at school. Because on that day is when the spoiled kid legitimately knocks out the teacher, dude. Yeah, not even kidding. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, ah, you see I'm doing it a little later on. I normally do it like 10 minutes in. Now we're doing it like 20 minutes in. If you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. That'll be the secret-ish word of the day. They're never that hard to guess, but it'll be the word of the day. Please comment them down below. I'll try and hard as many as I possibly can. And also, uh, this video will be on Spotify, too, as well as my future stories. In fact, you can kind of listen to them, some of them, an hour or two before they go up on Spotify. Also, follow the TikTok down below. I'll be posting my shorts on there, help out the channel. And finally, the best way to support the channel is to, one, finish this video all the way through. And then after you're done with that, go ahead and watch some more of my older videos. A really easy way to do that is to go watch older videos from my Storytime playlist, which which will be linked in the pinned comment down below. Please comment down below if you are watching my old videos or binge watching the videos as it really supports the channel and I will try and heart your comment and say thank you for doing such. Anyways, let's get to the point where this kid knocks out his teacher, bro. This, this is why you all came here. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, I didn't think so. So this all started in what felt like a normal day. After all this has gone on, obviously. And the spoiled kid was late for class. And I know in, like, college and in some high schools, but specifically in college, you can get away with being late for class, especially if it's a lecture class where, like, the teacher doesn't even really know who you are and they don't take attendance. You can even just, like, not show up for every day except the exams and you'd be fine. But in most high schools and middle schools, and at least in my high school and middle school, 
Attendance was a really big deal, and you would get really penalized for being late or being, I don't know, for just not attending enough or whatever. And that was true for this middle school as well. So the spoiled kid was late. And this wasn't the first period of the day, because then he could say, oh, I got in late, therefore I am late, sorry about that. But instead, um, yeah, he just, uh, this was like middle of the day. He just did not feel like showing up to the class because he didn't like the teacher so much. So the spoiled kid came in very salty. Like when the spoiled kid opened the door, he didn't simply open the door. He slammed that door open, bro. He got that whap. He just got the door. Boom. Door is slammed open. So he already was pretty clearly not having the greatest day ever, which... That happens to all of us, man. We've all been there. Life happens like that sometimes. It is what it is. But yeah, sure enough, the spoiled kid comes in, boom, slams the door open. Which, bro, if I'm late to class, I'm opening that that door as quietly as possible. I'm not trying to make a disturbance. I'm not trying to run in. That reminds me one time my freshman year, someone was late and the teacher was doing a presentation. And instead of just coming in, quietly and sitting down guy opens up the door says i'm so sorry i'm late and everyone's the pre- like everyone turns the teacher turns everyone's looking at him it, presentation is the flow of the presentation is completely interrupted like bro really played himself trying to be more nice about it but whatever right so he slams the door open i bet the spoiled kid just got rejected by some girl or something so he was not in a good mood and he already didn't like this teacher that much And the thing is, also, the spoiled kid must have, like, I don't know. I I don't know why, but instead of having his backpack on his back, he was holding, like, you know, like, the very top of the backpack, it has a little handle? He was holding it on the handle. And his backpack was full of books. So it was very heavy, right? This is important for just a second later. A teacher, instead of just kind of, like, I don't know, ignoring it, which maybe the teacher, in retrospect, should have just ignored this, But yeah, the teacher doesn't end up just ignoring it. And, uh, you know, the teacher is like, turns, he's like, like, spoiled kid, you know what I feel about attendance and uh, being late to class. I'm going to have to write this up and send this to the front office. And the spoiled kid must have had other, like, demerits or whatever, because I think if you were late enough, you eventually had to do, like, you either weren't allowed to have a free period or you had to spend your free period doing, helping out, I don't know, in the kitchen or something. Or, I don't know, for some reason there was some kind of punishment. It wasn't like, you're getting expelled for being late to class. But it was still something. And it was definitely something big enough and annoying enough that the spoiled kid didn't want to deal with it. So the spoiled kid does something absolutely crazy. I guess he just wasn't having a good day. Because the spoiled kid is like, not, he's like, I'm going to give you one chance. I'm going to give you one chance to take that back. And the teacher's like, no. They just watch, like, bro, what are you saying? The spoiled kid's like, fine, then you've sealed your own destiny. And the spoiled kid, I guess, was close enough to the teacher. He takes a backpack, he swings it behind him, and just full force going a very powerful swing and just letting momentum run, whaps the back, like, just whips the backpack around in the air, and just, boom, clean collision with the teacher's head, boom. And the thing is, there was enough, like, heavy textbooks in there And while this kid wasn't some big bodybuilder football guy, he was like, he swung it around and momentum, plus just how heavy the backpack was, was enough that when it made collision with the teacher's head, bum, out cold. Teacher literally falls back and collapses on the floor. The entire class goes dead silent. And the spoiled kid kind of realizes that he just messed up big. And he's like, oh my God, guys, my backpack just slipped out of my hands. How did that happen? Uh, no, everyone in the class, including Teddy, very clearly saw him just whack the teacher in the head with a backpack and knock him out cold. The teacher comes to in the next 30 seconds. He wasn't out for, like, forever, right? And the teacher's, like, grasping onto his head. He's like, Ja, what just happened? And some kids are running up to the teacher. These two kids kind of stand between, uh, the teacher and, uh, the spoiled kid. And kind of just like, hey... It, like, kind of just, like, to make sure that he didn't attack him again, even though it was pretty clear I don't think the spoiled kid was going to do that or anything like that again. And, you know, the teacher's, like, starting to get his memory back. He's like, wait a minute. Did that, did that kid? And he points at the spoiled kid. 
and uh, the spoiled kid has the backpack in his hand. It's very clear that he's looking super guilty. And the teacher's like, give me my phone. So one of the kids reaches over, gets his phone. The teacher calls up the security. He's like, I need you to come down to the class right now. So sure enough, a couple minutes later, teacher's still sitting on the floor. Two security guards come in and say, what happened? And uh, yeah, the teacher says, yeah, see that kid right there? Points to the spoiled kid. He just hit me over the head with his backpack and knocked me out cold for like, uh, like 30 seconds or something. So immediately, the two security guards go up to the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid's like, guys, it slipped out of my hand. It wasn't my fault. And just, like, literally grab his backpack and then grab him, basically. And are pushing him out into the hallway. He's like, guys, no. It slipped out of my hand. It wasn't my fault. And so, yeah, all the kids were just kind of sitting there. And the teacher's like, oh, God, I should really get this checked up. Teacher says, all right, guys, um, I did have a lesson planned today. But uh, I should really just go to the health center got this checked up maybe get some uh, aspirin my head is not feeling great maybe get a concussion test i don't even know at this point anyways uh yeah class is canceled today uh go about your uh, go about your business whatever you're gonna do and uh yeah so yeah uh the spoiled kid was suspended for an entire week he was also forced to sit in the back of the class and uh it was very awkward for the rest of that year and, uh, yeah, that is the saga of the Spoiled Kid versus Click on the, the video teacher. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who smashes the subscriber's computer because he gets jealous. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy story. Uh, don't worry, the Minecraft kid doesn't get away with it entirely. I mean, he smashes his computer, so that's pretty bad enough. But it's not like the Minecraft kid then goes ahead and just, like, doesn't get in trouble. This is a satisfying ending, even though the computer is still smashed. So, yeah, I know you enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new. Leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. But anyways, we're calling this guy Brendan who submitted this story. So anyways, Brendan was in class or was in the same grade as this kid who we're going to call the Minecraft kid cuz his entire identity was being a, was kind of like around being super great at Minecraft player versus player battles he was known as the one who was so great so anyways right people just called him Minecraft kid but anyways there's also a girl who we're going to call Haley because uh, that may or may not be the, the girl I'm trying to marry in Stardew Valley right now I gave her the bouquet I'm winning guys anyway Great game, by the way. I should stop getting distracted. Watch time will be bad. Anyways, there's this girl who we're going to call Haley, and both Brendan and the Minecraft kid had an interest in her. The difference was Brendan actually talked to her. Little pro tip for getting the ladies from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. Number one dating advice YouTube channel on all of YouTube and the internet. Talk to... If you want to get to know them, talk to them. Th yes, believe it or not. Wow. But anyways, right, Brendan actually talked to Haley, and they were getting along pretty well, and the Minecraft kid literally never did. The Minecraft kid thought that his magical and powerful skills at Minecraft would literally just be so great and so wonderful and so enticing to the women, right, that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to talk to Haley to make her fall in love with him. She would just see his epic PvP Bed Wars abilities, and she would be like, "Oh my God, I'm so I'm not I'm not thrown in that joke. Never mind. I I, I got a family friendly audience on here. I forgot." Anyways, right, so uh, Brendan, w or the Minecraft kid was aware that Brendan was probably also trying to go for Haley because Brendan was talking to her all the time. It kind of the word around the like kind of the word on the street was that you know. Brendan and Haley, oh my god, they're gonna be a thing soon, dude, they're in sixth grade, like, that's, that's how it goes, oh my god, are they gonna get the fifth base, aka holding hands, oh my god, it, anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid comes up to Brendan one day, and remember, Brendan and the Minecraft kid aren't necessarily boys, in fact, they don't even know each other that well, but the Minecraft kid is like, so, I see that you're trying to court Haley, and, and, and Brendan's mind, he's like, bro, this is 20-whatever, right? I think this story was a little old. I'm not sure. I actually don't know when this story happened. It was submitted to me on my Instagram. You can go follow it. You should go follow it. Anyways, Brandon's thinking to himself, did this guy just say court? Like, it's literally the 21st century. Are you serious? And then the Minecraft kid goes on to say, I offer you, like, I offer you, like, a quest, or I, 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 I ask you that we duel in Minecraft to decide who will get Haley's hand in dating. And, uh, I mean, Brendan was kind of just like, in his head, he's like, all right, well, first of all, I'm not dating her. Second of all, 
The winner of a Minecraft PvP battle is not going to decide who she decides, right? It's not up to them. This isn't like, I don't know, the barbaric era of like, oh yeah, like, uh, I actually have, like, all men have control, women have no say. Like, oh, I want to marry you, so you're marrying me. And also, I don't think there ever was an era where you did PvP battles to decide who was, like, you know, who would marry the girl. I'm better at Minecraft, I get all the women. Nah, this, that's never been true. It doesn't matter what parallel universe or anything like that you go into, man. I am sorry, Minecraft sweats. I am so sorry. But Brendan, who kind of knows that, you know, he's going to be getting with Haley anyways, uh, thinks to himself, all right, well, this will be kind of funny. Like, whatever, man. Who cares? So Brendan says, sure, we'll do a PvP battle to decide who gets Haley's hand. Because he's kind of laughing. He's kind of goofing. But the thing is, the Minecraft kid takes it super seriously. He's like, yes, you fool. Don't you know that I am super great at Minecraft? <laughs> and uh, Brendan's like, oh, chill out, bro. Like... All right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll PvP fight to, to, to decide who gets Haley's hand in marriage. Lol, like, okay. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, tomorrow at recess, we go to the table. Basically, at their school, there was a table where if kids wanted to bring in their computers, if they were in the sixth grade or higher, they could, and they could play on them. I, I, I know at my school, you weren't even allowed to have your phone out, but I guess each school's a little different. So basically, right, the next day rolls around, and Brendan and the Minecraft kid, they both bring their gaming setups, which I guess both of them have laptops, because I play Minecraft on a laptop, man. I don't have a, I don't have a desktop. That's I want to be able to move my thing around. But anyways, right, they both bring in their computers, and Brendan just has a kind of a crappy MacBook Air. And this is coming from someone who, uh, up to my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I got all my Minecraft gameplay from my MacBook Air at like 20 frames per second. So I understand the struggle, bro. I get it. So anyways, Brendan comes in with his crappy MacBook Air, and the Minecraft kid comes in with his like, uh, I don't know, his Alienware $3,000 super gaming laptop with his uh, super fancy keyboard and takes him like five minutes to get his setup all perfect. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And uh, so sure enough, uh, you know, they both sit down and Brendan is like, all right, so how are we doing this? And uh, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, we're going to play one game of, uh, of, of Bed Wars. Yeah, Bed Wars. And, you know, Brent, at first Brendan was like, bro, how are we going to do that? But then the Minecraft kid said that he had the like MVP++ rank on Hypixel, which Hypixel is a server that lets you play Bed Wars, which is the game I was playing in the very beginning. And if you have plus like MVP++, you can make private games where it's just you and your friends. So anyways, um, the Minecraft kid, you know, sent a dual request to Brendan or a Bed Wars party, whatever. Anyways, all you got to know is they were playing Minecraft and they were playing Bed Wars and it was just them. It was just Brendan and the Minecraft kid in a game. And uh, sure enough, they enter the Bed Wars game and, you know, they, you know, they're doing the stuff you do in Bed Wars, put down the bed defense. And you know what happens? Um, uh, Brendan is at middle. He's gathering emeralds, which is a good material to get. However, you know, his bed was exposed or he wasn't at his bed. He saw a bed destroyed message, which basically means in Bed Wars, if your bed breaks, you will not respawn. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid had like, I don't know, God bridged over with his crazy 10,000 clicks per second mouse, definitely using vape or something, but whatever, man. And so sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid comes to middle and Brendan and him, they show down for a PvP fight. They're gonna decide who gets Haley, even though Brendan knows that one, he's not good at Minecraft, and the Minecraft kid is, and two, this will not decide who gets Haley. This is hilarious. He just did it because it's funny, lol. So anyways, they enter their PvP battle, and they go in, and Brendan loses because he is just simply worse. And the Minecraft kid, after, you know, hitting, you know, Brendan enough times with a sword that he dies, is like, yes, Haley is mine! And everyone, because remember, it's recess time, because... Dude, they had, like, re I don't know if it's called recess, but they had, like, a break period. Um, so everyone was kind of around there, and a bunch of kids turn around and are kind of like, uh, what, wh what, huh? It, 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 are, are you okay, sir? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, you fool, you should never have dueled me for Haley's hand in dating in Minecraft. You should have known by my reputation that I would have absolutely slapped you. <laughs> And Brendan looks at him with this face of like, yeah, man, ah, that sucks. Wow. 
That is just too bad. This kind of reminds me of the first season of Parks and Rec, if you saw that, where uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Andy really wants to get his girlfriend back, so he like offers like a, a pool game with this guy named Mark, who disappears after season one. I, I don't know, maybe the actor wanted to do something else, and he's kind of like, oh yeah, I'll bet Anne, the, the girlfriend of Mark at the time, on this pool game, and Andy wins. He's like, yes, she's mine, but uh, reality sits uh, kind of kicks in, and he's like, wait, Huh? But I won her fair and square. Same thing here. So the Minecraft kid is still like, I don't know, Fortnite, uh, W, like, de- doing the little dances, doing the L dance, doing the little other cringe stuff. He's like, <laughs> Haley is mine. I didn't even have to talk to her, and she's gonna be my girlfriend. I'm gonna go to 10th base and hold her hand. <laughs> and, and Brendan, at this point, is, like, really trying to hold back a smile. He's like, all right, this is so funny, dude. Don't blow it. Don't make it apparent. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you totally, oh, man, I can't do this. I, you totally won. You to- I can't do this. Man. He's, just, he's, he's really trying to do it. He's like, yeah, you totally won Haley's hand in, in dating because you beat me in Minecraft. Yep, that's totally what happened. Holding back the laughter, holding back the tears at this point. And uh, sure enough, right, Brendan's like, all right, man, go ahead. And he's like, yes. I'm I'm going to tell everyone about my victory dance so that you know that so everyone knows that you lost to me in Minecraft and that's why Haley is mine. <laughs> the Minecraft kid runs away uh, to go tell his other okay, friends. Well, I don't know about that. I think his friends are his Bed Wars win streak and nothing else. But whatever, right? So Brendan goes over and finds Haley. Says, "Hey, um so I just played this guy cuz he wanted to duel me for your hand in dating." And Haley's like, what? And Brennan's like, yeah, I thought it'd be funny. So by the way, I lost the duel because obviously you can't do that, but I thought it was funny and I lost. So he's going to come over to claim his prize, I guess. And Haley's like, all right, well, this is kind of funny, but oh, this is an awkward situation. And Brennan's like, yeah, I probably should have told you about this beforehand. If you need me to be here, I can, I can subvert. Yeah, I, I can come in and uh, help you with the situations. Like she's like, all right, well, Thanks for giving me context, I guess. So sure enough, a little while later, uh, the Minecraft kid comes around and he finds Haley. And he comes up to her and he says, So, Haley, did you hear the news? This might be the first time the Minecraft kid ever spoke to Haley in his life. He was too busy. He was too busy sweating at Minecraft to even bother with the ladies. They'll come to me, man. I got a Bed Wars win streak. Uh, real quick, comment Bed Wars down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. If you want to help the channel out, go ahead and binge watch some more videos after this one or when you're doing something else. And let me know in the comment section if you do so, so I can say thank you. Anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid's like, so did Haley, did you hear the news? And she's like, well, I was told that you and Brendan had a little Minecraft video game session and that you won and that you now think that I'm your girlfriend. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm. That is exactly what happened. You're so observant. You'll be a great girlfriend. And Haley's like, dude, like, that's not how it works. And the Minecraft kid's like, we had an agreement. And Haley's like, yeah, well, I wasn't part of that agreement. Uh, how, do you think Brendan or you have the right to me as a girlfriend? And this is what the Minecraft kid starting to piece together that his offer to duel Brendan made literally no sense. And he's like, oh, well, um, so, so when we were playing... So, when we're playing Minecraft, I beat Brendan. Uh, can you, can, do you want to be my girl? And then eventually, like, Minecraft kid starts to realize, ah, oh, dude, he messed up, bro. He messed up big time. And he's like, wait, did, did Brendan, wait, how, who told you? And, you know, at this point, uh, you know, she was like, Haley was like, yeah, so Brendan told me about this. And then the Minecraft kid's like, so Brendan knew the whole time? That this wasn't going to work? And Haley's like, yeah, well, anyone who is logical, middle, just gets cut off the Minecraft kid, sprints away. And Brennan walks up to Haley and is like, so, is that terrible? And Haley's like, well, he's pretty mad at you, and he ran away, so I don't know what he's cooking up. And that's when you, we heard an, or not we, that's when Brendan and Haley and everyone else in the room heard a noise. The noise was something being thrown on the ground, smashing and flying into a million pieces. And that's when Brendan walks out and Haley walks out too. Basically, everyone walks out and they see the Minecraft kid standing above a pile of disc computer parts. And that's when, at first, Brendan thinks, oh my God, he smashed his computer out of rage. 
But Brendan looked at the table to see that the Minecraft kid's computer was still there. And in fact, the only computer missing was his. And that's when he realized that the Minecraft kid obliterated his MacBook. And there was a teacher present. So the teacher was like, Brad, like Minecraft kid, like, what did you just do? And Brendan speaks up and says, uh, he just smashed my MacBook. And all of a sudden the teacher looks at Brendan and looks at Minecraft kid and says, you two come with me. Sure enough, teacher brings him to the principal's office. Principal's office hears what the teacher says. She hears both sides, which the Minecraft kid literally has nothing to say. Like, what are you going to say, dude? And uh, yeah, parents were called, and uh, the Minecraft kid's mom had to reimburse Brendan's mom for the, to buy a new computer. Uh, the Minecraft kid had to write a formal apology to Brendan, and also write a formal, ap and actually both of them had to write a formal apology to Haley because Brendan had to explain the situation, and the teacher's like, dude, that's not cool. And uh, also the Minecraft kid got a week of detention for this. So moral of the story is one, if you're just playing Minecraft all day, you may not, uh, that may not be the most ideal or most optimal strategy to, uh, to get the ladies to love you. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, man. M maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Don't listen to me. I don't know. Today we get a story of probably uh, the cringiest emo kid, and when I say the cringiest, I mean the cringiest emo kid of all time. Leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's call today's subscriber, uh, let's call him Daniel. So anyways, right, one day, Daniel was in the mall with his friends. And Daniel and his friends decide that they want to go into Zoomies, which is a, it's a store that has like a lot of like skater type clothes. Uh, I, they also like, I used to go in there a little bit, even though I was never kind of like a skater kid. I just like the shirts with the cats with the middle fingers in them. I always thought those shirts were pretty funny. And honestly, I'd probably rock one of those today if I still had one, some of those shirts with me. But anyways, right, Daniel and his friends, you know, they decide to go into this, into the store and they're kind of just looking around, browsing the t-shirts, looking if there's anything they want to buy. And Daniel kind of goes towards the back of the store and towards the back of the store is where there's a bunch of skateboards or whatever And there's these two kids and they're like long dark hair There's like, uh, I don't know a lot of like black eyeshadow and makeup all black clothing kind of like dripped out with like skull chains Whatever dude just like kind of looking like this guy so anyways, right, Daniel doesn't, like, think anything of it. He's like, oh, that's, like, that's interesting, I guess. Because here's the thing. Daniel doesn't really care how you dress. Daniel doesn't really care how you act. As long as you're, like, decent to other people, he literally doesn't care if, I don't know, man, like, you can do whatever you want. But anyways, Daniel's kind of walking towards the back of the store when he sees one of the two emo kids say, look at him, go up to him, and hold out their hand, kind of like someone, like, you know, the traffic guards, like, go out and hold up their hand to say stop, and, and, the, and the emo kid's like, hey, bro, only emo kids back here, you wouldn't get us anyways, and Daniel kind of looks at him like, bro, I'm just trying to shop in the store, so obviously, Daniel's like, dude, like, I'm just gonna go back here real quick, I just want to see what they have, I'm not gonna, like, spend too much time here, you don't have to worry, and the other emo kid steps up and he's like, dude, I don't have to worry because you're not coming back here because you're not one of us. We can tell that everyone understands you unlike us because society, society doesn't get us uh, like how we get each other. And, and Daniel's kind of just looking at these two kids like, bro, bro, what, what, what's going on here, bro? Like, I, I don't really, I don't really understand, like... And Daniel says, all right, man, like, I'm sorry, society, like, does you so dirty or whatever, dude. And uh, Daniel's like, I'll just be a quick second. And the other emo kid kind of, like, snaps back at him, like, don't you step one foot further. You're not, you're not welcome back here. You're not one of us. You're not an emo kid. I don't know if he literally said emo kid. I don't know if they refer to themselves like that, but he's like, you don't get us, man. Only people like us, societal rejects, the people that nobody understands and how deep it is and how hard it is can be back here. And you're definitely a normie, bro. I can just tell you step one foot back here and, you know, I'm going to send you back to, uh, and he takes like a second to think of something. He's like, a pain town with my knuckles sandwich and, and daniel's looking at him like bro 2006 called and they want their entire aesthetic back but whatever dude so daniel's like all right and then daniel completely ignores what he says and takes one step forward because he's trying to go to the back of the store to see what they have 
He's probably not even going to buy anything. He's definitely not going to linger back there with those kids there. He doesn't want to hang out with them. Dude, trust me, Daniel does not want to be there as much as they don't want him there. He's just going to go in quickly, but he's also not going to not go to the back of the store because these two edgy, these kind of like edgy edgelord kids are like, dude, society doesn't understand us. Leave us alone, bro. Like, nah, dude, he's still going to go there. And like, honestly, like, I don't know if I would have done the same because I'm very not confrontational, but I would have been pretty annoyed. So sure enough, right, Daniel takes one step to the back of the room. And the thing is, Daniel didn't even take one step, like, aggressively towards the emo kid. He literally took it past the emo kid. He was taking a step in the direction of, like, the back of the store, not towards the emo kid. And Daniel, like, doesn't even really understand what's happening, but he just feels this, like, this, this force on his face and all of a sudden his entire face is stinging and his head is like ringing a little bit and then all of a sudden right he kind of comes to and realize that the emo kid just punched him in the face and daniel looks at him he's like dude what did you like did you just punch me bro and he's like dude i said only societal rejects allowed back here uh, you just didn't heed my warning and so the guy, like, at the Zoomies, like, the front of the desk of Zoomies is seeing what's going on, sees the kid punch him, is like, you guys got to get out of here. Like, I I'm not having any of this in my store. And, and the, you know, the emo kid is like, bro, this kid literally attacked me. And at this point, Daniel's like, dude, what? Dude, I was just trying to go to the back of the store. You say all this cringe stuff, and then you punch me in the face. And then when we're told to leave, you said that I attacked you? And the emo kid's like, bro... Look, he's lying. Look at the way that he's so angry. He's getting so angry because he's lying, dude. And he's talking to the guy at the front desk. He's like, don't kick me out and my friend. Kick this guy. This guy's causing up a huge storm. And the guy at the front desk is like, like, I really don't care. I need all of you guys out of the store immediately. And, you know, Dan Daniel's other friends are at the other side of the store. And they're looking over like, what is happening? So Daniel looks up the guy at the front desk, and he's like, all right, man, like, just so you know, this guy attacked me, but, like, whatever. I'm not trying to make your job harder. Look, I've worked retail before. I get it. I know it's hard. I'll just step out of the store. And the two emo kids were like, life is so unfair. Society strikes once again. And they, like, slowly lumber out of the store. But, dude, you might be thinking that the cringe is over here. No, 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 no. That's where you're mistaken. Comment emo down below if you'd like a heart on your comment. Emo is going to be the secret word of the day. And while you're down there, uh, follow my Instagram. It's in the description. That's where you can send in the stories. Turn on notifications. Join the Discord server. And anyways, right, Daniel and his friend and the emo kid and the other, the two emo kids all walking out of the store. And the emo kid is like, bro, bro, I was like, no, where am I going to go now? Zoomies was the only place that accepted us. And Daniel's like, dude, you should have thought of that before you punched me in the face. And then all of a sudden, right, you know, there's this mall cop that's walking around, kind of just patrolling the area. And one of the emo kids is like, Mr. Police Officer, Mr. Mr. Officer, whatever, we need you real quick. And the police officer's like, okay, like, he wasn't really doing anything. But, you know, he's not trying to really do his job either. So he's like, fine, what is it? He walks over and the emo kid is like, this kid literally punched me in the face. I need you to kick him out of the mall. And the officer's like, oh, and he turns to the kid. He's like, all right, is this true? And Daniel's like, dude, what? No, this guy punched me in the face. The officer's like, all right, well, if I only have conflicting stories, I'm going to be forced to, like, kick you guys both out of the store. And Daniel's like, oh, I, I didn't do anything. I just went into the store and he just punched me for not being emo. And the officer looks at Daniel and is like, all right, your story's sounding a little suspicious. You're telling me that this kid punched you because he, you aren't like emo or something? I don't think I can believe that, man. And Daniel at this point is like kind of like, he's like, I, 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 Daniel's lost for words because this is like the craziest thing that's ever happened. However, shout out to Daniel's friend because Daniel's friend is like, hey, I saw a security camera in there. Like, I'm pretty sure that whatever altercation happened was caught on camera. And as he said that, one of the, like the emo kids, like their faces both dropped. And the officer's like, oh, yeah, like, I can actually, like, it's pretty easy for me to request that. And if it's a certain type of camera, they can actually play it back directly in the store. 
and they you know they walk back into the store and the guy behind the cash register is like oh you guys are back already and then he looks at the officer he's like oh boy what did you guys do now and so anyways the cat the officer goes into the store goes up to the register and asks the guy if he can see like the camera in there was some kind of camera that was able to like it was you could play it back instantly or something or it's very easy for the officer to check the cameras on site so anyways he goes to the footage looks back at it is looking at the kids like kind of like looking at the camera then looking at the kids kind of to make sure that he's like seeing who is who and he puts down the camera and he looks at daniel and he's like all right son like you can go like you can do whatever you want and then he turns to the emo kid and he's like why did like why he just says why like why would you call me over when it's very clear that like this like you confronted this kid and then you punched him square in the face he didn't even like return a punch to defend himself which if he did i'd still have to kick him out of the mall but that would have been more understandable like why would you call attention like to this whole situation and you know you're gonna get kicked out of the mall because i'm gonna have to do that it's part of my job and the emo kid is just like society once again strikes it uh, no one understands me and the two emo kids are like uh society and the police officer looks at the emo kids and is like guys this is not society doing you wrong you literally punched some guy in the face and then told a police officer that like or a mall cop that he punched you and then when you get you caught caught on your lies and got caught like attacking someone you're 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 shocked that you got kicked out are you serious and once again the emo kid is like society you wouldn't get it bro click on the video on screen right now i know you'll enjoy it just click it do it How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today, we got some crazy emo kid stories that I know for a fact you will enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Hank. By the way, all these episodes are on Spotify, and they normally come out a couple hours early on Spotify, so make sure to check that out. First link in the description. Anyways, back to the story. So we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted the story, Hank. And anyways, this all happened when Hank was shopping at the mall. So Hank used to always go to the mall to shop with his friends. You know, it was just a fun place to hang out. They didn't really have a lot of other places that they could go uh, in the town that they lived in, so the mall was probably their best bet. And uh, sure enough, one of these days, one of Hank's friends wanted to shop at this place called Hot Topic. If you don't know, Hot Topic's a place where they have a lot of uh, t-shirts and other kind of apparel that is very, uh, I don't know, like fast fashion-y brand centric. Like it's very much like you, you'll have a lot of different uh, brands or kind of like you'll find a lot of band t-shirts, a lot of kind of like... Okay, so a lot of different stuffs at Hot Topic, but one kind of theme of clothing that you'll see at Hot Topic is uh, emo style clothing, if that makes sense. So like really black clothing, edgy clothing, stuff like that. And just so you know, like I have nothing against it. If you dress like that, I think it's a cool enough style. I think you're fine if you, even if you identify as like, oh, I'm, I'm emo in the way I dress or act or whatever. I don't really care. Live your life. However, as long as you don't act, as long as you don't act like the kids in these videos, especially this one, you're chill with me. But anyways, Hank just was like, okay, man, like you want to go to Hot Topic, that's fine. Hank hadn't really been in that much, so he didn't really know what to expect. So Hank was walking into the, you know, the Hot Topic and he was looking around and there's a whole host of people. And Hank's friend was like, all right, man, like I'm going to go, like, I'm going to go to the back of the room. I know what I want. I'm going to go in their skateboard section. You can kind of just wander around here. I'll be out when I'm done. So Hank was totally fine with this. And Hank kind of like was wandering around. And he walked over to one of the t-shirt aisles or one of the t-shirt rack aisles. And that's when he accidentally bumped into this kid. And this kid turns around. And just to paint the picture, this kid has super long black hair. He's got like black mascara on, black lipstick. He's got black painted nails. He's got a spiky collar. He's got like a black band t-shirt. He's got like long black jeans and then those like big black stomper boots. I don't know if you know what I know, like if you know what I mean, but like those big, kind of like those big rubber black boots that are pretty popular right now. And he turns around and he's like, dude, what the heck, bro? And Hank's just like, all right, my fault. Like, I didn't mean to bump into you like that. I was just looking around and wasn't paying attention. And the emo kid's like, dude, you're like, like, shut up, bro. Hank's kind of just looking at him like, uh, like, I, I don't really know what you mean. Like, I didn't do anything. Like, are, are you good? 
and the emo kid's like, bro, like, I don't need to, I don't need to hear that sass from you, bro. Like, I really just don't need to hear that. And uh, Hank says once again, like, dude, I, I don't know what you're saying. Like, I'm sorry. I'll just go the other way. And Hank kind of turns around to de-escalate because he doesn't feel like, you know, escalating anything. It's just not a good idea to get into fights like that. And that's when the emo kid's like, like, yeah, you would run. You're dressed like one of those jocks anyways. Which, like, Hank kind of turned around because he didn't know what that even means. First of all, I mean, isn't jock a positive thing? Like, I get that there's a bit of a neg- like, negative connotation of, like, oh, you're a dumb jock or something. But I would have thought that, like, jock would have meant, like, oh, you're an athlete, which isn't, is, isn't that a good thing? Like, I'm, I'm kind of confused right now. Is that not a good thing, you know? And Hank, uh, you know, kind of turns back. And he's like, dude, like, what, why? Like, why are you, like, making a problem with me? I don't have a problem with you. I, like, you're kind of the one that's making this into something, because Hank really did believe, like, I'm not, I'm not the one doing anything, it's, like, 100% this guy who's making it something, you know, and, uh, you know, the kid's just like, well, you know, like, you're just looking like a dumb jock, oh, uh-huh. isn't that right, guys, and he turns around, and there's two other emo kids, and they look very similar to the main emo kid, but they kind of just, you know, they're dressed slightly different, but really, I mean, it's funny how, like, non... I, I saw this on South Park, but it's funny how, like, non-conformists all dress the same. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I mean, you are conforming to something, but a- anyways, right? So the other two kids, the other emo kids, are kind of there along, too, laughing. And, you know, you know, Hank is starting to, like, get upset by this because he doesn't really care about, like, these random kids, what they think, except, you know, he's got three kids standing there, pointing at him, laughing in his face when Hank didn't deserve it. Like, Hank was, you know, Hank was thinking, like, look, if I deserve this, if I was being, like, an absolute, like, you know, if I was being a jerk to them or I, or for some reason I actually did something, sure, maybe I deserve this. But Hank's just thinking to himself, like, dude, I don't deserve this. I was literally just chilling here. I actually bumped into this kid. Like, I'm sorry about that. Like, my fault. Once again, my fault. But that's when Hank turned the tables on the emo kid. And the thing is, right, the emo kid was wearing a band t-shirt. And the thing about band t-shirts is, you know, it, you don't, okay, you don't necessarily need to know everything about some place that you rep. Like, if you wear a t-shirt that's from Starbucks and someone's like, okay, well, then name all the flavors of, like, ca- cappuccino you can get. It doesn't have to be like that. But the thing is, a lot of people wear band t-shirts because the band t-shirts look sick. And uh, they don't know any of the songs from the band, which, you know, I guess is fine. But, like, at the end of the day, a lot of people will kind of pretend to know it and not actually know it. So, you know, Hank was like, well, screw it, bro. He's like, all right, buddy. And he looks at the main emo kid, and the main emo kid looks at him back. And he's like, all right, buddy, name me three songs from that band. And he points to the emo kid's t-shirt. And I don't know, maybe it was like Nirvana or something. Like one of those kind of like t-shirts or whatever, which... uh, And the emo kid looks at him, and he has this kind of look of shock. This look of, oh my god, like you caught me. Kind of the look of like, man got caught in a trap right here type of look. And the emo kid's kind of like, um, um... How about you name me three songs from this band, bro? And he turn and the emo kid turns to look back at his emo kid's friends as kind of like, oh, what's their reaction to that sick burn? And they kind of just look at him blankly. I think the emo kid was kind of expecting he would turn around, he'd look back to his friends, and he'd be like, Oh yeah, wasn't wasn't that a crazy burn? I totally got them. But his friends look back at him kind of just like, ah, oh, dude. Like, I don't know how to break it to you, but you didn't get him. So the emo kid turns back around. He's like, oh, I don't need to tell, like, I don't need to do anything you say, bro. I'm not going to conform to your standards. And then the t- two emo kids were like, yeah, that's right on, bro. You're so right. And they like dap him up. And Hank at this point is he's just so done. He's just like, bro, because he realizes like Hank's like, you know what? I'm not going to fight with these kids. These kids are obviously a lost cause. This is not worth my time. So Hank gets up, he turns around, and he kind of says, like, whatever, man, like, go live your life. Hank turns around, starts to walk away, and that's when he feels a tug on his pants. And he turns around, and he sees the emo kid failing to pull down his pants. So basically, the emo kid couldn't, like, you know, wanted to, like, he couldn't let Hank just leave by himself. Like, he couldn't let him just do that. He So when Hank turned around and started to walk away, the emo kid, like, went to jump and try and pull down his pants to, like, pants him, to embarrass him, to, like, impress his emo kid friends and be like, oh, my God, I totally owned him, dude. So at this point, like, 
Hank is like, dude, stop pulling down my pants, bro. And the emo kid's like, oh, sorry, I just slipped. And he's like, uh. And his emo kid friends laugh along as well. At this point, Hank's getting really annoying. He's like, sorry, bro. Like, I'm not into you like that. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, you're trying to pull down my pants. So you're not, you're telling me you're not trying to get a peek? And, and the emo kid's like, dude, it's not like that. I was trying to pants you. And, and, and Hank's like, yeah. You wanted to pants me so you could see my, my bare bottom. Did you really want to see my bare bottom that bad? And at this point, the, em, the other two emo kids start laughing a little bit. And the, emo, the main emo kid turns around and he's like, Stop laughing! It's not funny! He turns back around he's like, Dude, you don't know what you just did. And the emo kid walks up to, the, uh, walks up to Hank with his chest puffed out. He's like, Bro, you literally don't know what you just did. You don't know who you're messing with. Okay, I don't know if he started to tear up or anything. But the, at the exact same time, the mall cop that happened to be like going around the mall to make sure that nothing's what, like happening looks into the Hot Topic and sees basically this kid walk up to this other kid with his chest puffed out. So the mall cop outside kind of slows down walking and looks inside. And sure enough, right, you know, Hank is like, hey, look, I'm not looking for any trouble. And the emo kid's like, yeah, that's what I thought. You're freaking scared, bro. Don't tell me otherwise. You're freaking scared. And at this point, Hank's like, dude, I'm not scared. It's not like that. I just, like, I just don't want any trouble. Like, you're not worth my time. And he's like, I am worth your time. I'm worth all of your time plus some because I'm worth more than you, dude. You don't know who you're messing with. At this point, right, the emo kids was really kind of just showing his true colors and being like, I mean, kid's insecure. That's fair enough. He's trying to act all tough in front of his friends. So once again, Hank's like, you know, he turns around and he's like, all right, man. He's like, dude, I'm just not doing this. Once again, have a good life. Hank turns around, and as Hank's turning around, the emo kid is like, in his head, he's like, I can't let this slide. So the emo kid literally raises up his hand and swings on Hank. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment emo down below. I just want to see how many people made it to the, made it to the end of this video, as I do appreciate you guys. Best way to support the channel, as always, is just watch a bunch of the videos. The more watch time you give to the channel, the more we get promoted in the algorithm, and I really, really do appreciate it. Let me know in the comments section what you do while watching my videos. I genuinely want to know. Just so you know, all these episodes are on Spotify. It's in the description, the first link. Please rate us five stars when you have a chance. If you want to submit these stories, and please do, because, you know, that's how I make these videos, go to my Instagram or Twitter. They're both in the, in the description, but they're also at Connor Pugs. I got a Discord server, link in the description, code Connor Pugs for 10% off gamer subs. Let's get back to the story. So Hank, remember, he turns around and Hank's like, dude, I'm not going to deal with you like that. It's not worth my time. So Hank turns around and the emo kid, who's like, I can't, I can't let Hank like one up me. Like, I can't let this random kid like, you know, kind of like alpha me in front of my emo kid friends or whatever. So Hank turns, so as Hank turns around, the emo kid swings on him, takes his fist, whew, the thing is, though, the emo kid's not like a, a trained, uh, I don't know, fighter or boxer or something. So obviously the emo kid doesn't make contact with Hank. Instead of making contact with Hank, the emo kid nearly misses Hank and his like right hook goes right through a rack of clothes. The emo kid was also, emo kid was really putting his full force into this too. Because once the emo kid misses and whiffs on Hank, the emo kid flies forward into the rack of clothes. So he basically like, pushes himself into a rack of clothes, fails to swing on him. The mall cop, however, did see the emo kid try and swing on Hank, so he walks in there. Hank turns around, and he sees the emo kid on the floor in a pile of clothes, and he's just so confused on what happened. And then, the, you know, uh, Hank turns around the other way to see a mall cop standing in front of him. So Hank's really confused at this moment. He's like, okay, one second ago, the, I turned away from the emo kid. And a second later, the emo kid is sitting, like, face first in a pile of clothes. And a mall cop is standing above me. Like, this literally makes no sense. And sure enough, you know, the mall cop's like, hey, you know, hold up, everyone. I got to talk to you guys. And the two emo kids, like, from the back, like, they, they get scared and they literally run off. They disappear into the rest of the story. He's like, hey, you get, get back here. But also the mall cop didn't really care that much because the, the two people that he really wanted to talk to were both Hank and the emo kid who swung on him. So the emo kid gets up. He's, like, kind of panting a little bit. He's like, <sighs> <sighs> and the mall cop's like, hey, like, hey, I saw you swing on this kid. I know you didn't make contact. 
but you did try and swing on this kid is 100%. Like, I, I, what's going on here? The emo kid's like, dude, I was just defending myself. And at this point, you know, Hank's like, that's not the case. Like, this, like this kid and I were kind of talking back and forth. He tried to pull down my pants. I made fun of him for doing that. I turned around. And he tried to swing on me. And at this point, right, you know, the mall cop kind of witnessed the last the last 60% of this altercation. So he knows for a fact that he saw the emo kid try and pull down the pants and then have an argument. So the emo kid says, well, after I pulled down his pants, uh, this kid tried to swing on me and I just defended myself. And the thing is, right, that was a mistake for the emo kid because the mall cop had been watching the whole thing. So the mall cop knew for a fact that that wasn't the case of what happened. So he went, so the mall cop goes on to say like, dude, I know for a fact that's not what happened. I saw you guys kind of like bickering in the store and I wanted to make sure that we had no like nonsense going on. Obviously some nonsense did go on and I, you know, I watched the whole thing. I saw you pull down, try and pull down this kid's pants. He did not swing on you. I don't know what he said to you that offended you or anything, but it's very clearly that, you know, you're the aggressor here and like, you know, I I can't have that. So he's like, Hey, I'm going to need you to come with me. And the emo kid's like, all right, like, all right, buddy, go ahead with him. And the emo kid is like looking at Hank and kind of giving him this look of like, come on, bud, like, go, go ahead. He's asking for you. When in truth, that, you know, the mall cop is not asking for Hank. The mall cop is asking for the emo kid. So the mall cop's like, sorry, man, you must be mistaken. I'm not asking for this guy over here pointing to Hank. He's like, I'm asking for you. And he points at the emo kid. And the emo kid is so absolutely stunned by this revelation. He's like, at this point, the emo kid is practically speechless. The emo kid is standing there is just like, you must have some kind of, you must have some kind of mistake or something. Like you can't be talking about me. That's insane. Like there, there's no way. Like, uh, what, what, what do you mean? Hanks is looking at the emo kid with this bit of a smirk and the mall, the mall cop is kind of like, come on, bud. Like we don't want to have any trouble here. Make this nice and easy for all of us. And just come along with me. And, you know, at this point, the emo kid is looking at Hank and kind of just giving him this look of, like, this isn't over, buddy. This isn't over. And Hank is kind of just like, wow, this, like, a lot just went down the last five minutes, you know? Because this was, like, no longer than, like, ten minutes of an altercation. And as soon as the mall cop basically drags the emo kid away, his friend comes rushing up to him. And he's like, dude, dude, like, I just checked out the thing I was getting. And in his hand, he had this, like, skateboard thing or whatever. He's like, dude, I just saw, like, a mall cop over here. I saw some kid getting dragged out of the store. Did you happen to see what happened? And Hank just looks at his friend. And is like, did I happen to see what happened? He's like, buddy, I lived what happened. Okay, so the, we're going to call the subscriber for the next story Bobby. I got a little uh, King the Hill theme going on with these names because I got Bobby and Hank. If you know, you know, and you're cool. Anyway, so Bobby was like hanging out at home one day and one of his friends hits him up. And, you know, Bobby, you know, doesn't see this friend this often because they happen to be going to two different schools, even though they live relatively in the same area. They're both in high school and they're both seniors in high school. So Bobby's friend, who we're going to call Ben, actually happens to have a car at this point. And, you know, Bobby's friend Ben hits up Bobby one day and Bobby's just chilling at home and he gets a text from Ben saying, hey, do you want to like hang out today? And Bobby is feeling kind of lazy. So he's like, ah, maybe like, what what do you want to do? His friend's like, dude, I want to go to the skate park. And Bobby in his head, he's like, I don't know if I want to go like this is I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I really don't know. And Bobby should have stayed home that day based on what was about to go down. But he didn't because he wanted to see his friend Ben. And he was like, wait, what else am I going to do today? Watch Netflix. I know by I know for a fact by the end of the day, if I'm just sitting here watching Netflix, I'm not going to be a happy camper. So sure enough, Bobby texts him back. He's like, yeah, man, like I don't got a ride. But if you can pick me up 100 percent. So sure enough, this friend, you know, I don't know, an hour later, pulls up to Bobby's house and says, hey, man, get in. And, you know, Bobby shows up to the, you know, the window. He's like, hey, what's up, Ben? Haven't seen you in forever. I don't got, just so you know, I don't have a skateboard, just so you're aware. And Ben's like, dude, I got two in the back. Don't worry about that. I got you. So sure enough, you know, Ben hops into the car with Bobby. And, you know, they, they drive, or Bobby car, hops into the car with Ben. They drive over to the skate park, which is like 15 minutes away from where Bobby lives. And they get out and, you know, Bobby used to skate a little bit back in the day with his friend. It's been a while. So he's not going to do any tricks or anything like that. But he's just getting along. The, he's just getting on the board. He's kind of riding around a bit, just getting a little bit of exercise. And mostly he's out there just to hang out with Ben because he hasn't seen Ben in a second. And they used to be really tight. 
So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just chilling at the skate park. They're having a good time. They're kind of just living their life. And that's when a group, a group, a very specific looking group uh, of, of these emo kids, they pop out of nowhere, basically. And they just appear at the end of the skate park. So this skate park is pretty big. It's not like a massive one. It's not like a, where you'd have a professional skater event or something. But it's a pretty big skate park. Like the city definitely puts them like a good amount of bread into making this. So sure enough, you know, they, they're looking over and they see this group of kids. And this group of kids has like a ringleader that's like standing in front of the other two. And he's kind of dressed like the other. They're all dressed like kind of like the other emo kids in the last story time. So I'm not going to go ahead and describe them. They're dressed a little bit differently, but it's all kind of the same, if you know what I mean. So the sure enough, you know, the kids are just standing at the end of the park. And it's really awkward because, like, Bobby goes over to Ben. He's like, dude, like, see those kids? And Ben's like, yeah, I've just been staring at them. And Ben's like, dude, they've just been looking at us for, like, the last thing. Checks his watch. He's like, dude, they've just been looking at us for, like, the last, the last like, two minutes, bro. That's really freaking weird. And, you know, Bobby's like, yeah, man, like, this is kind of weird. I don't totally know, like, what's the deal with all this. Like, do you know what's up with them? And Ben's like, dude, I don't go to the skate park. Like, this is your skate park. And Bobby's like, yeah, I don't really skate anymore, so I don't know. Maybe this is, like, a place they normally go to. Either way, this is kind of weird. Let's just stay on this side, and hopefully they'll stay on their side. And if they come over, you know, hopefully they're cool. Spoiler, they're not cool. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the farthest thing from cool. But anyways, you know, Bobby and, you know, Bobby and Ben try and ignore these kids. As these kids literally, they, the thing is, these kids... They're not, they don't even have skates with, they don't even have like a skateboard with them. And you don't need to have a skateboard to hang out at a skate park. You know, a park is a park and it's a cool place to just hang out with some friends. That's 100% true. However, I will say it is a little weird to like show up in a group of kids or a group of like a bunch of people stand there and watch other people without saying anything to each other, without doing anything like that. I will say that itself is pretty weird. So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just kind of standing there like, dude, this is really freaking weird. What's going on? And that's when they look over. And sure enough, they see the emo kids start to walk closer to them. Like the emo kids were just standing there for a good solid, I would say 10 minutes. And that's when the emo kids start to walk over to Bobby and Ben. And at this point, you know, Ben turns over. He's like, dude, what is up with your neighborhood, bro? Like, why do you always get the weirdos? And Bobby's like, dude, it's not my fault. I don't go here this often. I don't know. And that's when the group of emo kids shows up. And there's like very clearly like, this is going to sound weird, but like an alpha one. Like, okay. I'm not trying to use like weird, like alpha male terms or whatever. Oh, Connor, which one's the Sigma male? Shut up. If you say that in the, if you say that in the comment section, unironically, dude, actually shut up. But anyways, sure enough, you know, the, the kind of like the alpha, the pack, whatever that even means in emo pack words, is like, hey, you two, I need a word with you. And Bobby and Ben kind of just look at each other, just like, oh my God, like what's going on here? It's just kind of strange. You know, Bobby, Ben kind of like whispers over to Bobby, like, dude, we are never going back to your park ever again. And Bobby kind of just gives him this look of like, dude, I can't control this. So sure enough, the emo kid, let's just call him the alpha emo kid. <laughs> No, I can't say that for much longer. The, uh, the, the, the main emo kid, King the Pack or whatever, walks up to them. He's like, bro, do you not, under do you not know? And Bobby and uh, Ben kind of look at each other and, you know, Bobby speaks up and says, no, no, like, knows what, like, no what? And the emo kid laughs. He's like, oh, you don't know then. This is our turf, dude. And uh, Bobby and Ben kind of look at each other and Ben speaks up like, turf? Emo kid's like, yeah, man, you don't understand. This is our turf. And Bobby just means, like, w w what was that even mean? And they're like, you, dude, you don't want to mess with us. And one of them, like, legitimately, legitimately pulls out, like, a wand. Not, not like a knife or something. Not, like, actually trying to be intimidating. Like, this isn't like, oh, they think they're, like, actually in a gang or something. This is their turf. They pull out a wand. Like, a freaking Harry Potter magic wand. And, you know, the main emo kid's like, bro, my boy over here knows magic. You don't want to mess with him, dude. And uh, so Bobby and Ben kind of look at these kids and, you know, Ben speaks up. Ben's a little bit more brash. Ben's a little bit more, you know, I don't know, uh, conf confident is maybe the wrong word, but I'm going to use that word than uh, Bob. Confrontational, that's right. 
He's a Ben's a bit more confrontational than Bobby is. So Bobby would have been fine literally just going somewhere else. It's not like there's not a lot of other places. I mean, there's not a lot of other places they could go, but it's not like Bobby's a big skater in the first place. He just wanted to hang out with Ben. And Ben literally goes up. He's like, dude, what are you going to do with that little magic wand? Are you going to wave it around, put a spell on me? It's this freaking Harry Potter dude. We don't care. You guys don't have turf. That's ridiculous. Like, look, we're not taking up the whole park. This park's massive. You guys chill over there. We'll do our thing over here. We like, there won't be any trouble. And the emo kid's like, dude, there's going to be trouble if you guys don't leave or at least pay respects. And, you know, Ben at this point's like, the frick you mean pay respects? Like, what is that? Like, what do you even mean by that? And at this point, Bobby's starting to realize that Ben is kind of finding this amusing more than concerning. Bobby's more concerned by this just because they outnumber them like four to two. And these emo kids definitely like aren't hitting the gym every day. But at the same time, like four to two, it doesn't matter like how big you are. Like you're not taking them one on one. So like Bobby didn't want anything like that. Even if it's that emo kid smoke, he didn't want it in the first place. So sure enough, Bobby kind of looks at Ben and kind of gives him a look of like, hey, like, come on now. And, and Ben is like, no, I'm going with this. And Ben's like, all right, man, you know what? Put a spell on us, bro. Like, if you honestly, like, you know what? We're going to take the punishment. Put a spell on us. And the main emo kid looks at them and is like, dude, you don't want our smoke like that. You don't want us to, like, drop a spell on you like that, bro. You don't know our power. You don't totally get it. And Bobby is just looking at them. And Bobby's, like, kind of, like, completely freaked out at this point. Not that they're going to actually put a spell on him and, you know, I don't know, curse him or something. Bobby's just so freaked out by everything going on that he just doesn't want anything to do with it. So Bobby is like, uh, I don't know, man. How about we just, like, we stay here and you go over there. And the emo kid's like, I'm not talking to you, little boy. Which, like, Bobby was, like, so taken aback by this. that the, and, and Ben was like, you don't call my friend that. Come on, if you're such a big guy, little boy. And the, at this point, Ben says little boy back to them. If you're not such a big guy, little boy, put a spell on us. And he points to the guy in the back. And there's, like, a little emo kid in the back with, like, a little magic wand or something. The main emo kid says, you know what? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I, I don't want you guys to be seriously hurt. So I'm going to give you one more chance to, f to leave the premises or my friend will put a spell on you. And one, you will be cursed so badly that you will not make it out of this park alive. We have magical powers that you simply don't understand. And Ben is looking at them. And, <laughs> and Bobby is looking at them. And the emo kids are looking back. At this point, it's a classic, it's, a, it's one of those classic Texas standoffs, like who's going to shoot first, but instead of shooting, it's uh, either staying there or shooting your magic spells through your wand or whatever. And, you know, Ben was like, all right, no, we're staying here. Put a spell on us. Do it. And the emo kid is like, fine, you've sealed your fate. And all of them walk away. At this point, you know, Bobby and Ben look at each other. Bobby's like, Dude, those kids are weird. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Ben is like, really is your neighborhood spawning out the most NPCs in the world, dude? Like, this is crazy. And, the, you know, Bobby and Ben were probably going to go back and forth a little bit about how weird these kids were. But they were, unfortunately, interrupted by chanting. So they look over and they see the emo kids, like, holding hands, chanting, like, kind of like going in a circle, like, kind of like moving in a circle, holding hands chanting like demonic tongues at this point bobby's like bro i'm kind of freaked out and ben's like dude this is a comedy routine please like chill out at this point they do like the chanting gets louder and louder and it's kind of weird like it's really strange it's like they definitely been rehearsing this and bobby is gonna bobby admits to me that for a split second he was thinking like dude what these kids actually have magic powers spoiler they don't <laughs> they're just weird right and by the end of the chant, you know, one of the kids comes over, the main one grabs the wand, starts swinging it around, and starts walking over to them. He's like, like, one last chance, boys. I'm giving you one last chance to literally survive. This is, I'm giving you one more chance, unless you want to, like, if you want to leave here and see your parents again. And Bobby was just in his head like, dude, this kid's legitly weird. And Ben says, you know, bring it on, dude. I want to see the worst you have. And Bobby was like, you know, he admits, you know, he was a little bit concerned just because, I don't know, just like the confidence these emo kids had was kind of startling. And the main emo kid's like, fine. Takes up his wand 
He starts like saying a bunch of like random gibberish and waving his wand in a circular motion, pointing it at Bobby, right? Or at Ben, not Bobby. And Ben, you know, kind of looks at Bobby and gives him a wink. And Bobby knows that, but you know, Ben's about to be up to some mischief. And the kid is like, ha da da da, ha da da da, ha Or does like what is very clearly like the final motion. And Ben literally like opens his eyes super wide, clutches his heart, and drops to the ground and doesn't move. Bobby is like a little bit freaked out, but he also remembers that Ben just like gave him a big wink. And you hear all the emo kids, like some of them are in the back like, oh my God, oh my God, it actually worked. The spell actually worked. And the main emo kid has this look on his face, like the most scared look you've ever seen. The main emo kid was terrified because for like a couple, like for a good 30 seconds, the main emo kid actually thought that he just killed this kid from his like magic spell or whatever. So sure enough, you know, the emo kid like drops his wand, rushes up to Ben and is like, no, no. The spell, it was too powerful. I should have held back. And Bobby's just looking at him. And the emo kids, the other ones, are standing, like, talking to each other. And they're, like, frantically talking to each other. They are really concerned about this. They're like, dude, do we call the cops? Do we bury the body? Like, what do we do? Like, what if our parents find out? All this kind of nonsense, right? And that's when you hear giggling. It started as giggling. But then it just evolved into laughter. And that's when Ben flips over and is this, you can see that he's just been laughing. He couldn't hold it in any longer. And he gets up, he's like, oh my God. Oh my God, you fell for it. This is the funniest thing ever. He's like, guys, you're not wizards. You're just weird. Go to, look, go to that side of the park. We're going to be here and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's when I think the emo kids kind of realize that, you know, they weren't going to scare them out of there, and they definitely were not going to fight them out of there either. So sure enough, the emo kids are, they don't even say anything. These kids have, or they're kind of, I guess they're kind of done with trying to scare, like, Bobby and Ben out of there. So they pick up their stuff, they get up, and they leave. And Bobby and Ben, you know, they, they go back to doing their whatever they were doing before. But it really was just never the same after that, because, like, for the rest of the day... Bobby, like, Ben would just continuously make emo kid jokes, and Bobby would laugh and make them back. So, in fact, the rest of the day was better than ever before. And this happened a long time ago. Like, this happened, like, four or five years ago. And Bobby and Ben actually can't, like, reunited a couple years, like, about a year ago. And literally, like, the only, like, the only thing they did during their, like, when they reunited was retold this story and, like, made jokes about it the entire time. And uh, yeah, this is probably, if you want to continue supporting the channel, please click watch on the video, video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story of one of the cringiest emo kids of all time. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're calling today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brent. So this all happened when Brent was at soccer camp. And so Brent went to the soccer camp every single year. And it just happened that this year he encountered the emo kid at soccer camp. So anyways, this was just another summer of Brent going to soccer camp. His mom dropped him off, and once again, he was pretty excited to go. Unfortunately, some of the friends he made from the year before, they didn't show up this time, so he kind of like was kind of very proactive about finding people, you know, meeting new people, and trying to make some new friends. So anyways, in the very beginning of soccer camp, they had kind of a get-to-know-other-people type deal, and all of a sudden, right, Brent sees this girl, and she was at kind of like the girls' soccer camp, so it was kind of split up like boys' soccer camp and girls' soccer camp. However, it was all under the same umbrella of like the soccer camp program, so they would eat lunch together, do non-soccer activities, but like the morning soccer practices were kind of split up by gender like that. And so anyways, right, right away, Brent saw this girl, Emily, and he immediately kind of fell in love with her. Not actually, but was like, OMG, lol, she's cute. I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to try and hit. No, I'm just kidding. He's like, I don't know. He's like, he's gone to soccer camp. He's not trying to hit, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. But anyways, right, so she's going to be an important character later on. But for the meantime, we don't need to think about her because someone much more important comes into the picture. So while Brent is thinking about like, oh my God, look at that girl over there. I got to start talking to her. That's crazy. He accidentally bumps into this guy and he look, turns around. This guy is like, 
I don't know, a little bit bigger than him, a little bit heavier than him, just like kind of a bigger guy. And he's got this like long black hair that's swooshed over. He's like, he's wearing like the standard soccer cleats, but otherwise it's like this black band heavy metal t-shirt. He's got like black painted nails. He's got like a spiky wristband on or whatever. And he turns around, he's like, yo, what did you, what did you bump into me, bro? And Brent's like, oh, my fault, like, didn't mean to do that. He's like, you think that I'm, you don't think that I'm an alpha? Is that what you think? Brent's like, what? He's like, I'm an alpha male, just in case you weren't aware, which I, I know that you subconsciously were because, you know, all betas instantly know when there's an alpha present. And uh, Andrew's, or Brent's, <laughs> sorry, Andrew was the guy from like seven stories ago. Brent was like, uh what he's like bro do you not know what beta males and alpha males are well basically beta males are like you and lame and alpha males are strong powerful and dominant in the pack and with that like the emo kids does a big like swipe of his big long black hair so like his bangs would no longer cover his eyes it immediately fell back in front of his face he's like yeah just so you know kid get out of my way and the emo kid like shuffles away and this was Brent's first interaction with the emo kid. So he's like, uh, okay, <laughs> that, that's cool, man. Like, okay, see you around, buddy. Bye-bye. So anyways, let's, uh, flip, fast forward a little bit. After soccer practice in the morning, Brent was actually one of the better kids there. He was pretty good at soccer. They had lunch, and in the afternoon, they had activities such as, like, this like, I don't know, like, tag, capture the flag, all kind of, like, random camp activities, and today was capture the flag, and Brent happened to be on the same team as Emily, so immediately he goes over there, he's like, hey, how's it going, like, my name is Brent, Emily's like, hey, like, my name's Emily, nice to meet you, and Brent and Emily immediately hit it off, they're having a good time, they're talking with each other, they're enjoying each other's company, you simply love to see it, and, like, from very far away, Brent catches the, uh, catches the eye of the emo kid who's on the other team and is just staring him down for some reason. Brent doesn't really think much of it, and then, like, you know, he goes back to talking to Emily. So they're playing capture the flag right now, and Brent, you know, runs over to the other side, gets the flag, right, and it starts running back to his side. If you don't know capture the flag, there's, like, this little penny on both sides or, like, a little piece of cloth or something, and while you're on the opponent's side, if they tag you, you're in, you're in jail, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to run over there, grab their flag, and run back to your side without being tagged. However, there was a stipulation that it had to be a tag. This isn't tackling. You can't push someone. You can't, like, punch them or anything. You, all, you have to tag them if they're on your side. So, you know, Sam... Oh, Sam. Brent is running over there. Sorry, I have a list of names in front of me and from other stories. Brent is running over there. He grabs the enemy team's flag and is running back to his side. And he's really close when he just like immediately slams into the ground. And that's when he realizes that there's a big guy on top of him. And that's when he realizes that the emo kid tackled him. So the emo kid's like, nice try, buddy. Next time, try not to fight the alpha males. <laughs> and then a camp counselor comes over and says, hey, hey, we said no tackling. You, you're on the sidelines, points to the emo kid, you know. He's disqualified or whatever as this in on the sidelines. Ooh, so alpha, man. But anyways, right, so the pennies returned, but also Brent isn't in, like, jail. He goes back to the other side, and the emo kid has to sit out for the rest of Capture the Flag, and Brent continues to talk to Emily, and the entire time, the emo kid is just, like, looking over, and he's, like, all angrily staring at Brent. So Brent is now his official enemy. Brent kind of just assumed that they were enemies because of when he bumped into him and also when he got him disqualified, which, did Brent really get him disqualified or was it because he's an idiot and jumped on him? That's why he got disqualified? Who knows, man? But there was another reason why the emo kid hated Brent. There was another reason that Brent did not realize at the moment but was very... Very, very potent, and it's gonna be very, very important for later on in the story. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a hint. It starts with an E and ends with a Mli. Did you guys get it? Starts with an E and ends with a Mli. A Emily, I'm just gonna tell you, yeah, it's Emily, the girl. So emo kid likes her. Anyways, so Brent and Emily talk for the rest of that capture the flying game. The entire time, the emo kid is staring. Brent down. Brent just simply assumes, well, this kid hates me for that reason only. But let me just say that the next week of soccer camp was the craziest week that Brent has ever had.
So anyways, right, his mom picks him up. He goes back home. His mom's like, hey, how was the first day? And Brent says, oh, I met this really weird kid who tackled me. And she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? He's like, yeah, actually, I have barely any scrapes on me even. But he seems to not like me, so I'll keep you updated on that. So Brent is dropped off the next day, and he walks over there. And that's when the emo kid, you know, is just staring him down. And, you know, Brent is kind of walking over because there's a little bit of like a 5, 10, 15 minute period where the kids are just standing around talking with each other, waiting for them all to be dropped off. And then the kind of the soccer camp officials or camp counselors would then split them up into groups, do soccer drills, play games, whatever, standard kind of affair. And he's just kind of waiting around. And that's when the emo kid comes up to him and says, so you're challenging my authority as the F a man. And uh, Brent is kind of just like, what? He's like, <clears throat> I'll say it again, <clears throat> just in case your little beta ears couldn't hear me. So you're challenging my authority that I, that I am the alpha male of the pack. Uh, if we were wolves, which we kind of are, and it, Brent was like, what? If we were wolves, as we kind of are, as I said, I would be the alpha male, alpha wolf, and you would be the beta wolf, and I would be banging your wife while you watch little cuck beta wolf, wolf. And Brent is looking at this kid, and this kid is like, like, no offense, but this kid is like the opposite of what a stereotypical alpha male would look like, right? One of those red pit alpha males, it just looks the complete opposite of that. But anyways, Brent's not going to get into like a, you know, a, 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 he's not going to like, he's not going to rebuttal this kid. Because like, what is there to rebuttal? Everything, man? Like, this kid has no argument. But anyways, Brent's like, okay. And the emo kid's like... (laughs) Well, you say okay, but remember yesterday when you got me kicked out of the game, which you obviously tipped off the ref? And Brent's like, bro, you tackled me. It's very clearly stated in the rule books that you're not allowed to tackle anyone. How is this on me? He's like, dude, it was so clearly on you because the ref understood that I was the alpha male and I was simply asserting my dominance, bro. And, you know, uh, Brent's just like, dude, the... The, the frick are you talking about, dude? Like, I, I, I paid him off with what? The $5 allowance I get a week? With what? My, my used, smelly, stinky socks? What, what do I have? And he's like, I don't know, man. May, I, I don't know. Maybe you took his daughter on a date because his daughter's so ugly she'd never get a date. Oh. And Brent's like, was, was that a diss? Like, th- does he even have a daughter? He's like 20, bro. What? And the emo kid's like, anyways, I just wanted to let you know that I'm the elf man. You're the beta man. I will do your wife when you have one. And scene. And the emo kid walks away. And Brent at this point is like, <laughs> What? Why? 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 Why is this my life? Anyway, so skip forward to the, the soccer practice. They're put into groups. And the emo kid was in group B earlier, so they basically split them up into group A and group B. So group A is the better players, and group B is the crap, I'm just kidding, the players who are newer to soccer. And the emo kid apparently was on the, like, was on the cusp of uh, group A, was was at the very top of group B, and because his performance was good enough, he was actually moved up to group A. So now... Brent, instead of having a morning to himself to focus on soccer, now had to deal with the emo kid being, you know, thrown into the mix here. So anyways, they're doing some drills with a soccer ball, and they're kind of like kicking them around cones. You had to kind of keep control of the ball while you were running. And the emo kid, like they started, they said, okay, line up into three groups. And the emo kid immediately ran behind Brent. And Brent kind of looks behind him. He's like, what? And the emo kid said, nothing, Brent. Just letting you know that I'm the alpha male here. And Brent's like, okay, fine. Let's just do the drill. So the, the ref blows the whistle. Brent starts kicking the ball and moving with it. And the emo kid immediately runs up behind him and trips him. He's like, oh, sorry. And the ref's like, hey. And the emo kid's like, it was an accident, I swear. And the ref's like, all right, be careful. And Brent is starting to get really angry because, like, you know, if you, if you got an injury in soccer, like, especially if you get, like, a foot injury, he could be out for the entire week. I mean, this is like one of his favorite camps that he has every single summer. He loves going to it. It's one of his favorite things to do. And this emo kid, for the second time in the last 24 hours, has, you know, ca- like has gotten really close to causing him a pretty big injury. Like, I mean, he could have jumped. Like, he jumped on him yesterday. He ran behind him, knocking him over. What if he twisted an ankle? What if he, like, 
I don't know, fractured something in his leg. Like, it's not that hard, especially when you got a big old kid jumping on top of you every five minutes. It's difficult. It's, it's not that difficult, man. So anyways, Brent, for the next activity, waits to get into line before the emo kid does because he doesn't want to be in the same line as the emo kid. But it turns out that, like, everyone else lines up and it's literally just Brent and the emo kid waiting for each other to move because the Brent wants to go where the emo kid doesn't go and the emo kid wants to go where Brent goes. And the refs are, or the, not the refs, but the soccer coaches are like, come on, come on, kind of like, guys, get into line. And Brent's like, okay. And he sprints to the end of the line and then the emo kid sprints to the back of that line. And the coach is like, Emo kid says his actual name. Can you go to another line? Like that line's too long. The emo kid's like, okay, moves over one line. And when the coach turns his head, the emo kid literally runs back into the line with Brent again. So when the coach turns around, he's like, wait, e- e- emo kid, I-, I said, could you go to that line? And he's like, fine. Emo kid eventually goes to that line, actually does that. So for the rest of soccer practice, the emo kid tried to, like, bump into Brent, tried to make his life difficult, basically was just being a big butt the entire time. But um, thankfully, right, you know, that nothing really happened. He didn't bump into Brent successfully again. In fact, the emo kid, most of the time when he tried to bump into Brent, Brent would do some, like, very slick soccer move, kind of, like, break his ankles, not literally, but you know what I mean. And the emo kid would, like, fall flat on his face because he kind of, like, tried to run into Brent and then... Brent sidestepped him and completely swerved out of his way. Anyways, though, things start to get a little bit more interesting because throughout the next day, Brent and Emily are talking it up. It's very, it's very like, it's kind of like the known thing for the camp that like those two were kind of like the unofficial soccer camp couple. I don't know if your camps had stuff like that, but this was true for the soccer camp. And word was that, like, the two of them, they were gonna kiss soon. Oh my god, guys, isn't that, like, 12th base or something? So sure enough, right, one one of these days, so, like, a day later, Emily and Brent are just sitting with each other at lunch. They're kind of on, like, a quote-unquote date or whatever. And that's when a girl comes over and sits next to them. And Emily's like, oh, this is my friend Robin. And Robin's like, hey, guys, like, uh, I just want to let you know, Emily, that the kid over there, and points to the emo kid, is planning to ask you out soon. And Emily's like, dude, I don't know that kid. I've never spoken to him in my life. And Brent's like, oh, my God, I know exactly who that kid is. Emily's like, what? And Brent basically tells her the story that I told you guys for the last 13 minutes. And she's like, oh, my God, he's the worst. And Brent's like, well, that would explain why he really hates me, too. Because, like, not just that I embarrassed him, but I've been hanging out with you the entire time. And, you know, he probably knows that we've been talking a lot. And Emily laughs a little bit. And this one, Robin says, dude, like, I'm serious. This kid is going to come over and ask you out within like the next 24 hours. He's going to do it publicly. It's going to be really embarrassing. I, everyone's told him not to do it, but he's in his own world. You got to put, you got to let, you got to let him down nicely though. And you know, Brent was like, no, no, be, no mercy, no mercy, make him suffer. Emily's like, Brent, I'm not going to make him suffer. I don't know this kid. Brent's like, make him suffer. Emily's like, okay, I'm going to be nice. When he comes over, I'm going to be firm, I'm going to be direct, but I'm going to be nice about it, I'm going to be cordial, and life is going to go back to what it was before. So sure enough, right, Brent now realizes that the emo kid has a massive crush on Emily. And Brent also starts to think about it. When Emily says no to him, and when she starts really, you know, hanging out with me more, and when word gets around that we kiss, because we totally are, this is in Brent's head, right, He's going to actually, like, ramp up the craziness even more than it already is. I think I'm screwed, boys. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. I'm going to heart as many comments as I can that say that. That is the secret word of the day. And also, if you want to support the channel and help boost me back into the algorithm, uh, all you got to do is at some point, maybe after this video, maybe later, sit down and watch a bunch of my videos in a row. Maybe while you're playing video games or drawing or cleaning your room or maybe to help you go to sleep. I take that as a compliment now. I understand it. Uh, leave in the comment section down below how you're helping boost the channel. I will heart it. I will say thank you. And I'll even shout some people out like the person on screen right now. Thank you to this person on screen and all of you guys for all the support recently. It's really helped boost the channel. We're growing again. You'll love to see it. Let's get back to the story. 
So anyways, flash forward to that night, or not that night, but that afternoon. Remember when this is the, like, the mixed gender, just fun, more camp activities? They're playing dodgeball. And sure enough, you know, the emo kid and Brent actually happen to be on the same team this time. So, like, emo kid and Brent, they're picking up the dodgeballs, they're throwing them, you know, they're trying to avoid being hit by the dodgeballs. And the emo kid walks over and is like, sup, bro? And Brent's like, what? Emo kid's like... I just want to let you know that, like, I know that you and Emily, or you have been trying to flirt with Emily, and it's been failing horribly for my sources, at least. That's what my sources said. And I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I let you have your fun. I let you play like the little beta little lamb you are. <laughs> but I'm actually going to come in and, as the alpha male, assert my dominance and claim what is mine. Emily shall be my girlfriend by the end of tomorrow. Mark my words, and I will watch as little tears roll down your face because you're so sad that I took your girl. Oh, little Brent, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Brent's like, dude, she's not gonna lie. I've talked to her. She's gonna say no. Like, I, like, don't do it. I hate you, but I know for a fact that you're gonna get rejected in front of everyone. The emo kid's like, nice try, little boy. I know for a fact that my testosterone is 10 trillion and yours is zero. So based on that alone, plus a billion other factors, such as my manliness, my alpha maleness, my swag, overall levels, and a billion more things. Just, she will obviously say yes to me. And even if you two are fake dating, she'll break up with you immediately to say yes to me. I just know some things that you don't know, Brent. Get over it. So the emo kid walks away. And Brent's like, well, you know, my conscience is clear because I tried to warn the kid not to do it. I tried to warn the kid, right? I I'm not a bad guy. I told him not to do it. I told him. I said... I even gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, I don't like you, but I want to help you here. He didn't listen to me. It's not my fault. Whatever happens tomorrow. Next day rolls around at soccer practice. The emo kid for the entire morning is like, Brent, Brent, better spend the last moments with Emily as you can because she's about to be my girlfriend. Oh, and Brent's like, dude, shut, shut up, dude. He's like, oh, my God, am I getting to you, man? Am I, am I getting to you, man? Oh, man, it was so easy to break your thin, weak, beta skin. Oh, my God, my words are hurting you so much. I'm going to lick up your little salty tears. Mm, they're so tasty and so good. And Brent's like, shut up, bro. You're going to get embarrassed. I can't wait for the moment. She better go hard. Anyways, flash forward to lunch. The moment. So anyways... Brent is sitting with Emily, and Emily's like, dude, the emo kid, I can't see him anywhere. And Brent's like, dude, he, he's going to ask you out. It's happening. Get over it. It's going to happen any second. And she's like, he, he's going to do in the next day, which means probably now, probably now in front of everyone. And, you know, Brent's like, that's what he said he would do. And Brent was like, oh, my God, don't turn around. Because Brent was looking, and the emo kid was walking over. And what was he walking over with? He was walking over with a boom box. <laughs> you already know where this is going. And Brent's like, you know what? Brace yourself. Um, try and have an out-of-body experience right now so you don't have to deal with what's about to happen. Um, this is about to be bad, Emily. I'm so sorry. And Emily's like, oh my God, oh my God. And that's when you start to hear music. It's the emo kid's personal band. So it's like this heavy metal rock band. So just imagine some like heavy metal rock going in the background. And the lyrics are, Emily, yeah, yeah, yeah. Emily, why, why, why do you hang with losers like Brent? Emily, please love me. Yeah. And it's just kind of like more stuff like that in the background. And the emo kid is like rocking out by himself with an air guitar while this is all going on. It is the worst moment of Brent's life because the second hand embarrassment is so strong he's basically getting first-hand embarrassment from the whole thing everyone has stopped eating and turned around including the camp counselors they're just watching this kid bounce around with an air guitar with his like super long black bangs flying around all around the place as this boombox plays one of the sh 
the crappiest songs they've ever heard, the wor- terribly mixed, the worst lyrics, basically saying that Brent sucks and that she should be in love with him, and he's bouncing around, and then after five whole excruciating minutes, and everyone at this point is laughing and trying to hold themselves together, after five whole long excruciating minutes of the worst music ever and some like really bad air guitar and bouncing around, the song stops and the emo kid says, Emily, it is clear who you shall choose. What is your verdict? And Emily's like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm not going out with you. Emo kid's like, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? Emily's like, dude, I don't know you. He's like, dude, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? And Brent's like, all right, man, that's enough. Let's, 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 let's concede while we're behind. The emo kid looks at Brent and says, this isn't over, man. And he walks away with his boom box. And Brent's like, why did he say that to me? I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't dump him. And Emily's like, dude, that was worse than I could have ever imagined. And right, so Robin, the friend who warned them, came over again and said, look, I should have warned you about that. I didn't, I didn't think it was real. I didn't even think that that was actually going to happen. I was told earlier this morning, and I laughed. I'm so sorry. I should take, take anything that you hear about this kid seriously from this point on because, oh, my God. And Emily's like, wait. Oh, no, we still have an activity tonight, like, for the, like, this afternoon. And Brent's like, oh, my God. He said this isn't over. And sure enough, it was far from over. So they get to the activity that afternoon. So it was probably the worst possible activity that it could have been. Because it was small groups of charades. They kind of ran out. They, they had something else planned. But since it started to rain, they had to go inside. So they are like, all right, we're going to break you off into small groups of three. And we're going to have you play charades with each other. And at this point, like, they're like, okay, what are the odds? Brent's like, what are the odds that I'm put with? And the person says, Brent, Emily, and emo kid. And Brent's like, you got to be joking, man. You got you to gotta be joking. Apparently, right, Robin tells him this, like, later on, like, once the camp is over. Apparently, the emo, because she was talking with one of the camp counselors about everything that went down. The camp counselor said that, like, once, like, it started to rain, the emo kid went up to them and asked what they were doing. Camp counselor said, oh, we're doing groups, small groups of trades. And the emo kid requested that his two best friends and him were put together in a group. So it wasn't just random. It was the emo kid. But Brent didn't know that at the time. So Brent looks at Emily, and Emily looks at Brent, and they're both, both, but they're both basically just like, oh boy. And they, then they both look at the emo kid, who has a massive smile on his face. So all three of them go away to a corner, and the emo kid's like, Emily, I might have came on too strong. And she's like, well, that's an understatement. But he's like, I will show you the truth. Brent, I challenge you to an alpha battle. Brent's just like, What's an alpha battle? Ha! You're such a beta for not knowing what, what an alpha battle is. Beta. He's like, an alpha battle will be proof that I am alpha and you are a weak beta. And then Emily will choose me. And Emily's like, I'm not. And he's like, wait! Your, your heart will tell you otherwise after the alpha battle. Emily's like, okay, I'm still not going to. She's like, God, stop! Silence, woman! And Brent was like, whoa, chill out, dude. He's like... You silence too? We're having an alpha battle right now. So, right, this is kind of looks like they're doing really weird charades from afar, but the emo kid is like, all right, let's form our best wolf poses. Brent's like, what? He said, form your best wolf poses now. And emo kid, uh, Brent's like, all right, all right. Ooh, emo kid's like, that is the worst wolf pose I've ever seen. You were definitely not part wolf like I am. And the emo kid does this really weird pose. He's like, oh my god, I'm wolfing so hard right now. This is the most emo thing. I mean, the most, (laughs) the most alpha thing I've ever done. Oh my god. At this point, Emily's like, guys, you are both embarrassing yourselves. Emo kid, it's like, no, you will see that I'm the most alpha. I swear. Emo kid's like, all right. Let's do it. Wrestle me. And, you know, Brent's like, what? Emo kid jumps on top of him, just tackles him to the ground. Because he's like 20 pounds heavier, right? And a little bit taller. And Brent was completely taken off guard. He's like, bro, stop. What are you doing? And the emo kid's like, I'm out alphaing you. That's when one of the cam counselor comes over and says, all right, guys, break it up, break it up. Tears the two of them apart. He's like, all right. So we're only doing this for 20 more minutes, but it looks like... uh, Looks like you two can't keep, you know, can't keep off of each other. So I'm going to be joining your group. 
Imagine how awkward this is. It is Emily and Brent, the emo kid, and a random camp counselor. So they do normal charades, right? And the entire time, the emo kid is, like, sneaking in punches to Brent's arm. He's like, ow. And when the camp counselor looks up, the emo kid puts his arms behind his back. And the emo kid's like, this isn't over, man. And then the emo kid walks over to Emily. He's like, tss, tss, Emily, tss. Emily's like, what? Do you think I'm more alpha? Shut up, kid. Emo kid's like, no. Okay, well... Okay, I'll just be direct. Do you want to go out with me? No! And the camp counselor was like, guys, silence while I'm doing charades. And Emily's like, dude, I don't want to go out with you. How many times do I need to tell you this? Emo kid's like, but I'm definitely more alpha. She's like, that's not a real thing! So the next day rolls around. It's Thursday. And that afternoon, there's no real activity. It's just known as, like, the uh, soccer dance or whatever. And during the soccer dance, there's one coveted slow song where anyone who has feelings for each other might ask for, like, a slow song or something. And sure enough, let's just jump to the dance because the emo kid is, like, being a jerk to Brent all day. But that's not anything new. And sure enough, it is the dance. And they're putting on normal songs. And Emily and Robin and Brent are all together, like, dude. And Robin's like, dude, the emo kid is definitely going to try and get that slow song with you. Like, Brent, you got to swoop in right away. Because at this point, Brent and Emily were, like, unofficially a thing. They're only at camp for a week, so they're not going to make, like, a a long-term relationship. Let's have kids, baby! Okay, okay, you know what I mean. But sure enough, uh, you know, the slow song comes on. And Brent's like, oh, my God. And Emily's like, quickly. And you can see the emo kids sprinting from the other side of the room. So Emily and Brent quickly, like, get together in the slow song, kind of like whatever. And Emily's standing there, and she feels Brent being ripped off of him. And the emo kid grabs Brent, rips him off Emily, and tackles him on the ground. And this is where the camp counselors are like, oh, okay, foul play, foul play. They go in, they grab the emo kid, and they, like, run it. Like, they, they take him off. They're like, all right, buddy, this is, like... Like your third strike and you are out so they call up the parents of the emo kid they say your kid your son can't come tomorrow he's like fighting this one kid again and again and he won't stop and so sure enough the emo kid was picked up taken away and brent and emily finished off with the slow song together the next day rolls around it is friday it is only a half day where basically the parents come and watch a little like soccer presentation that all the kids have done and by the end of it, right, you know, most people are packing up. Brent and Emily are gone. And you remember the friend Robin from the beginning? One well, of the camp counselors and Robin were, like, friends or whatever or, like, friendly. And the camp counselor counselor's like, do you happen to know about that, like, emo-looking kid? Like, do you happen to know what was up with him? And Robin's like, do I have a click story Click on the video on screen right now. You. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Leave a like on this video and I'll actually give you nothing at all. Now, but what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine you're chilling with your girlfriend. Life is awesome. You stare into her eyes lovingly, and then all of a sudden, this emo kid walks in and says that you must fight him to the death to decide who gets your girlfriend. And at that moment, you seriously just sit there and question your life choices. That is the story I'll be telling today. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story James. So anyways, there's an e there was a kid in James's class who we're going to call the emo kid. He kept to himself. He wore crazy makeup and the dark clothing and whatever. And uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter what you wear. But he was also extremely melodramatic. Like he would come in, he'd be like... Society doesn't understand me. No one gets me. I'll never fit in. He, he, he was kind of like one of those kids that kind of just like would say this stuff and then would be like, why do I not have friends? I'm just a melodramatic freak all the time, which uh, I mean, I was pretty weird <laughs> in middle school. So like I can't really speak. But uh, then again, hey, man. Anyways, so there's also a girl in uh, I don't know. I'll just call her like uh, we'll let's call her Kate. Right. It's Name of my friend back home. Uh, so anyways, James and the emo kid, unfortunately, decided, had to cross, cross paths because they both had a thing for this girl. And this Friday, right, so this story all starts, th like, this weekend, or not this weekend, we'll say starts on Monday. And this Friday, remember, not actually this Friday, I mean this Friday in the story, was going to be the school dance and the whole thing was, like, whoever got the slow dance with this girl was basically going to, like, if you, so the thing at James's school is if you slow danced with a girl, you were basically dating her at this point. You guys were practically 
in love at that point. So it was a pretty big deal who was going to get the slow dance. And it was the emo kid versus James. And this became very public knowledge. Like the emo kid was telling everyone that he was going to 100% get the slow dance. And people kind of knew James because James was more popular. He wasn't like, I don't know, some like really annoying popular person. He was just like a cool guy that everyone liked. I mean, at least according to James, who submitted this story. So who really knows? But we'll go with it, right? So everyone kind of knew that both the emo kid and uh, James were both fighting for this girl, Kate. And Kate made it pretty clear that, you know, she was not going to say yes to the emo kid. Like, sorry, unlucky. Life just works out like that. But she was considering saying yes to James. She was kind of just keeping... uh, The truth was that she was going to say yes to James if he asked. However, she just wanted to keep him kind of like on his toes and questioning or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, throughout that whole week, uh, the emo kid and James, they didn't really, like, they weren't, like, in a fight with each other, but they, it was kind of like, they were kind of like rivals in a sense, even though they never had any direct confrontation. And let's just skip ahead to that Friday. It was the day of the school dance. It was emo kid versus James. So anyways, at this point, you know, the emo kid is like, you know, he's kind of like, he's standing in the corner of the dance, right? Look, I was pretty awkward in, in high school and middle school when it came to those big dances, but to be fair, everyone else was as well. But uh, the emo kid was kind of taking it to a whole different level. He literally was like slouched in the corner of the room, his like long black hair kind of like down, almost like, you know, that scene from the ring with that, like, the girl who comes out of the TV, he was kind of looking like that chick for a second. So he was definitely not helping himself out in this situation. And at this point, James and his boys were kind of standing, like, together, whatever they were dancing to, I don't know. I don't freaking know what they play at high school dances. Maybe some uh, Whip Nene by Silento. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's a middle school dance, bro. I don't know how this works. But anyways, they're kind of waiting for the slow song to come on. Maybe some... I don't know, some, like, song by Adele or something like that, like, the when, like, (sighs) dude, I always try and, like, say lines from songs during these stories, and I just blank every single time. Um, But anyways, yeah, so they're all kind of waiting around there, and it was, uh, eventually, the slow dance song came on. And remember, you might be thinking, oh, man, who cares? It's just, like, a slow song. No, 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 what you have to understand is the slow song meant everything everything to these kids like the slow song basically if you had a slow song with some girl because remember they were in middle school this this was like seventh eighth grade so the probably the farthest you ever went with a girl was like slow dancing or maybe holding her hand if you were like crazy because you know if you hold a hand if if you hold a girl's hand for too long there is a chance you get her pregnant so (laughs) definitely not misinformation from the connor pugs channel (laughs) but anyways slow dance was a really big deal and all of a sudden the song comes on. And the thing was, right, uh, the, the, the emo kid was too busy kind of like sulking about society in the corner of the room to react quick enough. So James was like, all right, bro, like that guy's playing himself. I'm going to go in. So James very quickly goes in and boom, he gets there, goes up. He's like, hey, like, hey, like, can I have this dance? And she very happily says yes, because she said, like, oh, I don't know if I'll say yes. She knew. She was bluffing the whole time. And James kind of felt pretty confident about it. And even though she said, I don't know, he was pretty confident because her friends were like, yeah, dude, she's totally bluffing. Like, I hate to expose my friend like that, but she definitely has a thing for you. You're, you're chilling. You're in the green. So anyways, James goes in. He feels pretty good about the whole thing. But let me just say that the emo kid eventually looks up and then he sees this. And the emo kid is not having it. Uh, so <laughs> he does something pretty insane. So uh, strap in and definitely prepare for the cringe. If you have your uh, cringe seatbelt un- unbuckled, I'm actually going to fine you for your own safety. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and uh, buckle that cringe seatbelt because th- there was like a DJ station and there was like a guy who was like, DJing quote unquote and there was like a microphone so like you so like the DJ could say like hey like 20 minutes till the dance is done or get ready for this hype song or whatever and other than that he just he was really just a Spotify playlist he just like he just edited the Spotify playlist right however the DJ let the Spotify playlist run on autoplay or whatever and he went to the bathroom so the emo kid ran up to the uh he ran up to like the spot or whatever he grabs the microphone he stops the music first of all he goes up to the Spotify clicks pause on the music and screams into the microphone wait and everybody turns around everybody turns around and they look at this kid 
and they're all kind of like looking at this emo kid who's standing at the front of the room with like the, the the microphone he picks it up he's like kate no so at this point everyone's kind of looking at this kid like oh my god because they all knew that like he wanted to have the dance with kate but like james obviously got it so they were like ah that's tough man like life sometimes doesn't work out the way you want it to like that's just unfortunate how that goes However, you know, he goes up there and he's like, he goes in the microphone, like he says, wait, and everyone turns around. The music is off. He's like, Kate, may I have this dance? And everyone's so confused because first of all, he turned off the slow song in the middle of the song. And also she was already dancing with someone. And instead of just going up to her, he makes a massive scene in front of everyone, grabbing the microphone and screaming into it, saying, like, will you have this dance? And the thing is, right, it's caused enough commotion that the guy, like, the DJ that was hired ran back. Because I think he was supposed to be there the whole time, but he needed to, like, rip a piss or something, so he needed to go. And he runs back over. He's like, give that back to me. He, like, snatches it out of the emo kid's hand. He's like, sorry for the, inter inter sorry for the interruption, guys. Turns the music back on, like, starts, like not cursing out this kid, he's a middle schooler, but being like, dude, what do you think you're doing? You can't just like, come up here and take this stuff. Like, if like if you do this again, I'm going to tell your teachers and you'll be in big trouble. Or I mean, uh, I, I don't know how much trouble a, uh, a, a hired DJ can get you in, but, you know, the emo kid returns to his cor corner and literally just sits down, just slumps into the corner of the room, which James felt kind of bad. He felt a little bit bad because, like, James has definitely been in that position, I say that very kind of liberally because James has not actually been in a position where he grabs the microphone at the school dance, stops the music, and asks the girl out unsuccessfully. He hasn't specifically been there, but he's definitely been in a situation where it just hasn't gone his way. So he feels bad, man. You know, it feels bad, man. You hate to see it. But uh, yeah, anyways, James like continued on with the slow... I mean, he's not going to stop his life because this kid has an unlucky moment. Like, that's tough. So, uh, yeah, you know, while I, I will say there was kind of an awkward moment because while, like, James is, like, slow dancing with Kate, he kind of, like, turns around. Like, they, they kind of, like, turn around so James is facing the emo kid, and he just looks up, and the emo kid is staring at him with, like, the creepiest, most stalkerish, most scariest stare he's ever seen because the emo kid is slumped over, like, the girl from the ring, right, and is just, like, staring right at him. He's, like, long black hair, like covering most of his face besides his eyes and he's like slumped over too like kind of like crouching over like an old guy with a cane or something but without a cane and james is like hey do you mind if we turn like 45 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way ah thank you that's much better <laughs> so he doesn't have to see him anymore or actually let's do a whole 180 i mean he didn't ask for a 180 because he didn't want like kate to be making eye contact with him either but yeah so that was a bit of a tough situation however you might be thinking well i mean at this point, reasonably, the emo kid must have realized that this just wasn't his day, and uh, he must have just, like, given up, which he's already, I mean, he's already embarrassed himself. Like, he probably gave up after this point. And uh, while that would be pretty fair for you to believe, that was unfortunately not the, that was just not what happened, because the emo kid would continue, um, let me just say that the emo kid thought that if he, if he had a sword fight with James, that he would be able to win the honor of his lady. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. Leave, I will try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best possible thing you can do is just watch this video throughout the entirety, the entirety of this video. And then afterwards, if you could watch some of my old videos, that helps more than you can ever imagine. And please go in the comment section and tell me how many of my old videos you've watched today or this week. I'll heart it and say thank you because it helps me out more than you can ever imagine. Anyways, let's go back to the story because the emo kid is not done. In fact, he is far from being done. So what happened after the school dance, like over the weekend, um, James actually met up with Kate. They went to like go get dinner together. And that's when they officially started dating, w whatever that means in eighth grade, which means, oh, my God, they're going to sit together at lunch. Oh, my God, dude, that's crazy, right? Uh, but anyway, so James officially starts dating this girl. Word gets around really quickly. And eventually the emo kid 
I, I'm pretty sure at this point the emo kid would have known, but by his next actions, it's not super clear. So that Monday is the first kind of like lunch day that uh, uh, Kate and uh, what, what's his name, James, are going to be having their first real at school lunch date, which is a pretty big deal for the eighth graders there. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal in general, but hey, man, let them have their fun. And so, uh, yeah, he sits down, like he finds Kate, they sit down, and they're at a table by themselves. And like people are looking over and talking and be like, ooh, someone's dating, <laughs> whatever, right? And uh, however, James, you know, Kate is facing away from the door, but James is facing the door. And James sees the door open up and he sees the emo kid walk in. And James is like, ah, this is tough. Because James feels bad. He legitimately feels bad because, I mean, if the roles were reversed, he would feel bad like seeing the girl that he really liked a week ago sitting with the guy who was low-key his like enemy rival on a date. Like that would be tough to see. And James started to feel a little bit worried when the emo kid starts to approach him, right? Starts to approach him. And uh, yeah, so the emo kid walks up to their table and at this point, Kate also realizes that someone's walking up, so she turns around. And the emo kid walks up and doesn't look at James. He's not paying any attention to James. He's actually acting as if James doesn't even exist at this point. The emo kid turns to the girl, uh, Kate, I forgot her name for a second, says, Kate, I've been wanting to ask this for a while, but since we've become so close in the last couple weeks, which they have never spoken before, but that is beyond the point. At this point, that is beyond the point. He's like, I was wondering if you would like to go on a date with me, if you would like to start dating. And uh, James is like, oh, no, he doesn't know. How does he not know? Because James is like, everybody knows. Everybody told everybody, but I guess everybody didn't tell the emo kid. Of course they didn't. And Kate at this point is like, oh, well, I'm very flattered. And the emo kid's like, well, if you're flattered, then you should say yes, correct? And at this point, she's like, oh, well, you see... It's actually not great timing because I'm actually currently in a relationship. And the emo kid's like, what? How? With who? And James is like, oh my god, this is, this is so awkward. He doesn't know. So James has kind of assumed that the emo kid didn't think anything of the fact that James got like the dance with her, which in all reality, he was the emo kid was kind of the one who had the most common sense in that situation because just because someone dances with a girl once doesn't mean anything, right? But at this high, at this middle school, if you got the slow dance, you were basically in. You were locked in at this point is what I'm trying to say. So Kate has to go on to awkwardly explain to the emo kid that, well, um, the guy that she's sitting at right now on the lunch date with happens to be the guy that she's dating. And the emo kid turns to James, looks at him, looks him down and up. Like, there's like the elevator look when he looks at like the top of his head, looks all the way down and looks all the way up, turns back to Kate and is like, really, dude? You decided to date this guy when you could have dated me? He's like, bruh. And he just like, he just kind of like storms out of there. And uh, James looks at Kate and he's like, Dude, how did that kid not know that we're dating at this point? Like, I swear to God, all your friends told everybody. Like, and Kate's like, dude, my friends didn't tell everyone. And James is like, if you ask anyone at the school, besides the emo kid, apparently, they will know. And Kate's like, yeah, okay, my, my friends do talk a lot. And they're like, well, that was pretty awkward. Hopefully nothing else happens again. You might be thinking at this point, Connor, the emo kid must stop. There is no way he continues on. There's not a chance... That he continues, right? Well, 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 I got some news for you guys. He does continue, and it's bad. Because uh, you might be thinking that, oh, well, the emo kid stormed off and he was done. No. About 20 minutes later, when there's only like 10 minutes left to lunch, James sees the doors open up again, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Because the emo kid walks through. But this time, he is like stomping towards James super angrily. He runs up to the table practically, looks at James, looks him in the eye, and says, it's not over between us. It is far from over between us. And he's like taking his little finger and like pointing at James. And James is like, okay, nice. Like, I, 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 like, we do not care. Like, I, I, I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, okay, cool, nice. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? And the emo kid after that is like, you better watch yourself. It's about to get bad. And he, like, storms out of there. 
And, you know, at this point, James is like, okay, well, I guess uh, that answers my question. So the next day at lunch is where things get really, really, really crazy. So he's sitting there with, uh, with Kate on his second date. James is enjoying himself. He's having a good time with Kate. They're enjoying each other's presence. They're, they're doing well. I mean, they're, they're kind of clicking, so things might continue on, right? And that's when the emo kid walks in. And he's carrying, like, two sticks, like, two pretty good-sized sticks that he probably found in the backyard of the school. So in the backyard of the school, there's, like, a mini forest. Nothing too crazy, but there's, like, a pretty big forest back there. And the emo kid must have gone back there and, like, found two decent-sized sticks. He walks into the cafeteria with one stick in one hand and one stick in the other. And James is just looking at him. And he's like, he kind of says like to Kate, he's like, oh, okay, we got trouble. Kate turns around, looks at it, and it's just like, turns back around and is like, what? And James is like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but I guess we're about to see. So the emo kid walks up to the table, like kind of like waddles his way up. And he's like, you. And he like hands the stick to James. And James is like, uh, like, I need a little explanation. What do you want me to do with this? Like, it's not super clear. The emo kid's like, you and I will have a sword battle, and whoever wins the sword battle will have the uh, will 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 win the honor of your lady, and will. At, at this point, like Kate's like, what? And James is like, dude, what are you saying? He's like, fight me, fight me to the death. The winner gets your girl. And James is like, no. And the emo kid's like, oh, so you're scared of me then? You know that you're gonna lose, and that's why you don't want to do it. And James is like, well, I'm not convinced I'm going to lose. I mean, I'm not an expert at random stick fighting or whatever. But at the same time, why would I want to even engage? Like, why would I even want to do it? And the emo kid's like, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, for the sake of your honor, bro. Like, do you really want to be known as the guy who chickened out because he's a chicken? And James is like, well... I mean, I, I don't really care, but I also don't want to be known as the guy who went on, st who during the like the dance last Friday grabbed the DJ's microphone and like stopped the music to like ask out a girl who was very clearly in the middle of dancing with someone else, and then come into school the next day super angry with a bunch of sticks and try and like fight some guy to get the girl that already obviously said no to him twice. At this point, the emo kid's like. So you're, what you're saying is that you're too scared to fight me and because you know you'll lose. James is like, dude, we're going in circles right now. I'm not fighting you. I'm not having a sword fight to the death. Like, okay, I'm just not doing that. At this point, the emo kid's like, fine. Well, you're about to see me in my final form where I am the most powerful. And James is like, uh, okay. Like, word. And then the emo kid reaches up to James and rips out like a strand of his hair. And James is like, dude, like that hurt. Like, why would you do that? And the emo kid's like, I need that for my wizardly spells. And he like laughs really awkwardly and like shuffles out of there. And James turns to Kate. He's like, dude, <sighs> like what life choice did I make to get myself to this position? Like, what did, what did I do wrong? Like, what choices did I make that got me here? And Kate's like, I don't know. Like, this is kind of tough. He's like, yes, why me? Like, why? Why? Like, he just, dude just came up to me with a bunch of sticks and says, I want to fight you, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, he just, like, pulls a piece of hair. Like, what? Huh? Bro? I, 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 I just don't know. I just don't know what to do at this point. And Kate's like, yeah, I, I don't know. But, like, I think eventually he'll just get bored of whatever he's doing and give up. So, anyways, next day, it is uh, lunch. Lunch once again. And James comes in, and he finds Kate. And he's almost like they sit down. And he's almost like, he, he's really stiff. He's, like, not talking that much. And Kate's like, are you good? Like, is everything okay? And James is like, dude, it's not you. It's just the email. I just don't know what that kid's going to do today. Like, I'm not trying to lose any more hair. Like, that That really hurt last night. Like, I was starting to bleed from my scalp where he pulled me. Like, that was ridiculous. And, you know, Kate's like, yeah, that kid's pretty weird. Like, sorry you have to go through with that. And speak of the devil, dude. Because at that point, the emo kid walks in. And at this point, he has a backpack on. And he has a, <laughs> he has a smaller stick 
and he has he has a stick in his hand, a smaller one, and a like a like a spirit Halloween wizard hat on. <laughs> and, and James is like, "You gotta be kidding me, bro!" Like he was, "You gotta be kidding me!" And at this point, Kate's like, "What?" She turns around and she's like, "Oh my god!" And the email kid walks up and she's and he's like. Ha ha ha, like, this is where you made your mistake, James. This is where you made your last mistake. And he walks out, and he sits next, and he, like, stands up next to them. He reaches into his backpack or whatever. He takes out a piece of chalk. He takes out, the like, a, a, a plastic bag that has a hair in it, presumably, um, what's it, uh, James's hair. And he also has, like, a candle set and a lighter. And he sits down on their t- he like sits down next to them and th- so they had concrete floors in the uh, in the in the lunchroom so next to them he draws like a pentagram puts a bunch of like candles around uh, like the pentagram takes James's hair puts it in the middle lights all the candles at this point th- like this is taking like 2 minutes to do Kate and James are just sitting there looking at him completely aghast like what is like just like what is this kid what is this kid on? Like, whatever he's on, dude, like, maybe get me some of that. Oh, my God. No, but they were just like, w- 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 I mean, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? So eventually the emo kid has his whole, uh, I don't know, his magic setup is all done or whatever you want to call it. And he lights, starts lighting all the candles. He's like, James, this is your last chance. Give me your girlfriend and I won't put a spell on you. And James is like, dude, what do you mean give me my girlfriend? Like, it's a, it, it's like a mutual choice to be like girlfriend and boyfriend. Like <laughs> you're, you're acting as if this is like the, the, the 1600s or something. And like, when, and like the, the wife is the property, of the husband, bro, like, what are you talking about? And you know, he's like one more chance, bro. I'm about to put a crazy spell on you. If you don't give me your girlfriend and Kate, this is when Kate speaks up and is like, dude, like, even if he said that he was going to give me to you, I'm not going to be, like, I'm not going to be your boyfriend. Like, I'm not going to be your girlfriend, dude. And the emo kid's like, well, I'm going to put a spell on you too, dude, if you don't become my... <laughs> he literally threatens Kate. It is, And he's like, oh, if you don't become my girlfriend, I'm going to put a spell on you as well, which... Okay, um, I might not be the smoothest individual. I might not be, I don't know, the one that has the greatest pickup lines of all time. My Tinder one's pretty funny. I did steal it from my friend, but maybe I'll... I'll, I'll 5,000 likes and I'll reveal it because um, it's, it's pretty funny, but it's also a little embarrassing. But here's one thing I do now. There's a very decent chance that if you threaten to cast a spell on a woman if she doesn't become your girlfriend, she's probably, probably, not 100%, but probably not gonna become your girlfriend i know i might be going out on a crazy limb right now and I, you guys might completely disagree and maybe you found your wife of 10 years who loves you very much from threatening her with magical spells i just don't think that's a great way to do it so eventually the emo kid finishes up and then he lights the hair in the middle and then he takes his magic wand waves it around and just starts saying a bunch of nonsense and at this point, half the, like, the, the entire cafeteria has turned, is just, like, looking. They've almost, like, circled around it like it was a school fight or something. They've circled around it, and they're just like, what the frick, bro? Like, oh, my God. Like, what's going on right now? And eventually, the emo kid, like, points his magic wand at, um, at James and is like, ooga booga, or I, I don't know. He's just saying some nonsense. And, uh, like, literally 15 seconds of pure silence happened. And then... Very clearly, nothing happens. And he's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna count to three. If you don't, you're going to explode because of my spells. And James is like, I think I'm going to take the risk. He's like, three? I'm going to give you one more chance, bro. Like, I'm going to give you one more chance. And James is like, nope. I'm going to take the risk here. Two? And he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good, man. Like, you can go ahead with this. If I explode, I explode. Like, that's tough. <laughs> one? Last chance, dude. I'm being super generous right now. Just give me your girlfriend and we'll be all good here. And James is like, nah, I'm, I'm chilling, bro. He's like, fine. Kicks it. The, the emo kid literally kicks over his magic, like, whatever set. Because I think he knew it wasn't going to work anyways. Which, thankfully, it was concrete floors and nothing, like, 
flammable because like the candles fly all over the place or whatever and he storms out of there he like storms out of there at this point (laughs) james sits back down he's like you know maybe we should go on dates at night when we're not in school and kate's like you know that's not a bad idea so the next day kate and james actually don't sit together at lunch um they sit separately um but uh, yeah, so they they just they decide that if they're gonna like do anything, at least for a little bit, to do it outside of school, like after school or at lunch or something like that. But the emo kid once again comes up to James, and James is like, "Oh my god, oh my god, dude! Like what? What now?" And the emo kid, like he literally goes on one knee, and like kind of like presents. He's like he's down on one knee, puts his head down, and says like, "I concede. I concede the battle." you win. Like, I just, like, I tried everything possible, but you are the better duelist. Like, I honorably concede. And in James's head, he's like, bro, he didn't say this, but he's like, bro, you did not honorably concede. You did the least honorable, con- like, <laughs> you did not concede honorably. But at this point, James sees this as a perfect opportunity for the emo kid to just stop. So he's like, all right, man, like, it was a good battle. It was really close and you'll get them next time. Like, honestly, James is trying to be as chill as possible so that the emo kid doesn't come back and be like, well, actually, I'm going to try more magic or something. And the emo kid stands up, and he, like, kind of, like, nods his head, and James nods his head back, and the emo kid bows and leaves. And, yeah, after that point, James and, the, and uh, Kate actually were able to, like, do, like, lunch dates or whatever in school again. Uh, the relationship lasted, like, six months. It didn't last crazy long. But Kate and James are still cool to this day. And, uh, yeah, the emo kid never Click on the video on screen right point. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today I have probably the craziest emo kid story I have ever received to date. I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's just jump right into it. We're calling today's subscriber Ty. So anyways, Ty was going off to camp, and this was his first time doing an overnight camp, so he was a little bit nervous, and it was kind of like a wilderness-based overnight camp, uh, but they were mostly in cabins. Ty's parents did it before, and they actually met at this camp, so they were really pushing for Ty to go, but the summer before, he just said that he, you know, wasn't ready and was going to do it the next year. And, of course, the, the next summer rolls around and Ty's like, oh my god, I said that? So sure enough, Ty and his parents ship him off to this camp. Ty's a little bit nervous about it, but they say, hey man, it's going to be good for you. Trust me. Like, I know it's scary, but you just got to do it. So anyways, they arrive at the campground and they go, they walk over, Ty and his parents walk over to the person who is signing everyone in. And it's some like, you know, some 25 year old dude with a big old goofy smile on his face. He's like, hey guys, welcome to Camp Awesome. That wasn't actually the name, but we're going to call it Camp Awesome. Uh, hi there, buddy. What's your name? He's like, uh, uh, Ty Gooden. And he's like, ah, Ty, let me see. Oh, there you are, buddy. All right, so you're going to be in group B over there. And he points to this group of kids and, like, one counselor or whatever. And Ty turns around to his parents, and his parents are like, all right, well, we'll see you in two weeks. And Ty's like, Mom, like, I don't know if I can do this. And Ty and his dad, his dad kind of sits down and he's like, yo, you got this, buddy. Like, you don't need to worry about it. Like, trust me. The two weeks are going to fly by and you're going to have so much fun you're not going to want to leave. That's a guarantee from me. And Ty's like, all right. So Ty walks over and he goes over to group B and there's a big group of kids and, you know, the counselor's like, hey guys, my name is Ben. Uh, don't worry, he's not the evil guy, but hi guys, my name is Ben. Welcome like to the camp. These are going to be the guys who are in our group. We're going to be in the same cabin together. We're going to do a lot of activity activities together. You can still meet people in the other groups, but these are going to be the guys you're going to be seeing all the freaking time. So start getting to know each other. Let's go around, do some names. And so they went around and did some names, and Ty was just kind of like observing, like, all right, well, that person seems kind of cool and whatever. Like, oh, we have that in common. And then it kind of comes around to this one kid that Ty didn't even realize was there until like a couple, like until he spoke up. And this kid had these, like, long, black, swooshed hair, right? He wore all black. He had these, like, rock band t-shirts, these big, like, black boots. He had this spiky, like, brace necklace type thing. And by the way, if you kind of dress emo, that's totally chill. I don't really care. As long as you don't act like this kid, you're cool in my book. I say this every single time. 
And this guy was kind of just known as the emo kid. And since I don't, I don't want to give him a name because I will forget it and then it'll be very awkward. But we're just going to call him the emo kid from this point on. And Ty didn't think anything negatively. He was just like, oh, this guy really does put a lot into the way he dresses. And he definitely dresses with a lot of character. Ty legitimately had no ill will or feelings of just like, ew, this guy's dressing different than me Ugh, or anything like that. It was just an observation. And so later on, you know, they have, like, they go to dinner together as a group, and then afterwards they have, like, the welcome to camp ritual, whatever. They all sit around a big campfire, and, like, they're, like, inaugurated in the class of 2015 or whatever. I don't know. This took took place a little while ago. But anyways, right, it's finally time for them to go back to their cabins to figure out which bunks they want, etc., like that. So anyways, right, they get back there, and uh, they're just ran, they, the, the, the counselor dude who is their group B counselor, right, who's also sleeping in the cabins with them, is like, well, you know, just to make sure that no one feels left out, we've already assigned bunks to everyone, so he said, all right, Ty, you're in bunk A, and he says, so-and-so, you're in bunk B, so-and-so, you're in bunk D, and then in bunk D, which they're in kind of like quads of four, or they're in kind of like groups of two, but they're bunk beds, so it's four, so in Ty's group of four, the fourth one was the emo kid. So the four of them walk over, they go in their bunks, the camp counselor say, or the camp counselor says, yo, if, if you really want, you can talk to your, your bunkie about being top or bottom, Don't, doesn't really matter, lol, doesn't really matter. And so sure enough, Ty and his bunk didn't, they, they didn't really care. Ty was on the bottom, he didn't really care. But anyways, flip over to the, you know, the emo kid. And the emo kid is like, you know, with this guy, and we're gonna call this guy uh, Benjamin, He's a throwaway name, but Benjamin was his bunk, and, you know, the Benjamin is like, hey, do you mind if I have the top? And the emo kid is like, no, I must have the top. I must keep watch at night. And everyone just kind of went silent in the, that group of three. They're like, uh, or group of four. They're kind of like, um, and Benjamin's like, all right, man, uh, that, that's fine. Bomb bunk's cool with me. He's like, good. You've made a good choice, because I will watch over us at night. I have spoken. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, a lot of character in this guy. <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. <laughs> Anyways, things seem pretty normal. Pretty normal until, you know, it's time for them to go to bed. So anyways, uh, you know, they, you know, they go and they brush their teeth and then they get into bed and the camp counselor guy comes around. He's like, all right, group B, section A or whatever you want me to call you guys. Let's call you the A Squad. Yeah, um, we're going to have a lot of fun in the next two weeks. Uh, just make sure no leaving the camp or no leaving the cabin overnight. Make sure that, you know, you follow any rules that, um, you know, we ask you to. Be nice and, you know, be nice and, like, fair to everyone and just, you know, have fun. Anyways, good night, guys. And he walks out of there. And so, you know, the lights are turned off and they were... Ty in his box in his top bunk and also Benjamin across from him. They were talking for a little bit and the emo kid didn't really join in. He was just sitting cross-legged, but like kind of like sitting very stiffly. So he was very much not going to bed. And eventually they're like, all right, I'm tired. Good night. And they all kind of like go to sleep at that point. And about 20 minutes later, Ty has not fallen asleep because he's still feeling a little weird. He's in a new environment. He, it's like dark or whatever. He's a little bit scared. He's a young kid, whatever. He hears wrestling, right? And that's when he hears steps, right? And he realizes that the steps are coming from across from him and it's coming from the top bunk across from him, meaning the emo kid, you know, is starting to walk down the bunks. He's like, all right, well, there's nothing too weird with that. And that's when he hears... Because there's, like, a door next to, like, their cabin. So there's, like, multiple exits from the cabin. He hears the door open, and he watches as the emo kid walks out. So Ty, at this point, is like, what? So he kind of gets up, and the person above him is completely asleep. But Benjamin, the kid from the side of him, is still awake. And he's like, yo, Benjamin, Benjamin. He's like, yo, what's up? He said, emo kid. Because I may, maybe said his actual name, but we're calling him emo kid. He's like, emo kid, he, he just walked out the door. Benjamin's like, you can't do that. And, you know, Ty's like, dude, but he did. So anyways, they both get up and they both look out the window, but they're trying to do it stealthily so that they're not caught, right? And they see the emo kid literally just standing there, standing there looking into the moon. It is the creepiest, weirdest thing they have ever seen because the kid is just literally freaking standing there, bro. He's just standing there observing the night sky. And they're all like, oh my God, dude, that's freaking weird. What is going on right now? 
And, uh, you know, sure enough, you know, Ty and Benjamin were like, all right, this kid is a little strange. Uh, make sure he doesn't, like, strangle us to death or something in our sleep. I'm a little freaked out. And that's when the emo kid, out of nowhere, does a 180-degree turn and turns right looking at the window. Ty and Benjamin quickly jump down. They're like, oh, my God. Like, Do you see us? Do you see us? Do you see us? So, like, Ty starts to look up. He, like, peeks a little bit into the window and quickly goes down because he sees the emo kid walking towards the window. And he's like, dude, dude, Benjamin, he's walking towards the window. He's like, crawl back, crawl back to your bunks, crawl back to your bunks. So they both crawl out of sight of the window and they crawl into their bunks. And it's dark enough in the room for them to do this without being super obvious. And they're both in their bunks. And Ty turns around under the like under the uh, the sheets, right? And he peeks out, and the emo kid is literally standing right with his nose up against the window, looking in. And he's like, "Oh my god, this kid's insane!" Uh, anyways, emo kid walks back in quietly, goes up the stairs again, and sits in the bed, and supposedly goes to sleep. Ty doesn't fall asleep for like another hour afterwards, but eventually he opens his eyes to the camp counselor being like, "Ty, Ty, come on, come on." We're, we're going to be late. And Ty's like, oh, my God. And everyone else is like, yeah, you slept in, man. Actually, everyone in this bunk besides emo kids slept in. And that was because everyone was so freaked out that they couldn't go back to sleep. But anyways, first day activities. They go outside. And during the day, they don't totally have to stick with their group. They're actually assigned to random groups. However, a lot of people in the random group will be from their group because they're just trying to make friends within the group. So, and they also go to meals together. So like lunch or dinner or whatever is together. And so anyways, the first activity of the day is not with the emo kid. It is actually like a kayak slash canoe or whatever, either or one of those two. And, you know, Ty is a lot of fun. And they go back to dinner or lunch, sorry. They go to lunch as a group together. And Ty's, you know, talking about what he was doing. And the counselor kind of went around the table and was like, oh, so Ty, what did you do? And Ty explains, oh, so Benjamin, what did you do? Benjamin explains, oh, so emo kid, what did you do? And he was like, you know, I prayed to the overlord. And they're like, oh, ha, ha, I don't remember that being activity. Emo kid's like, it's not it's necessary. And he's like, uh, okay. Anyways, guys, so I'm going to read off the people in your next activity because the way it worked was at meals. So ag breakfast, the camp counselor read off what group everyone else was in for activities. And then at lunch, the camp counselor read off what people would be in for the uh, afternoon activities. And so Ty, uh, the camp counselor was like, oh, so Ty, uh, Benjamin, and Emo Kid, you're all going to be in the uh, group seven or whatever. And that happened to be like, something with like wood tool making or something kind of cool like that. So anyways, after lunch, they all head in that direction. And Ty and Benjamin are like walking together. However, the emo kid, it's not like they were walking away from him, but the emo kid intentionally stands like, or like walks 10 feet behind them, never breaking the distance. Like they always have 10 feet between them and the emo kid never breaks it. And he kind of walks weird. He walks very stiffly, yet he's kind of like propped forward at a 30 degree angle. His arms straight shoot like straight down. And he kind of waddles a little bit like a penguin. But it's very intimidating and very weird. And Benjamin kind of whispers like, Ben, Ben, I, 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 I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. And, or not Ben, but Ty. Ty, I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. Ty's like, dude, Benjamin, I know, I know. So anyways, they get there. And the camp counselor dude is like, hey, guys, welcome to woodworking. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can make whatever tools or whatever you want. All I, all I ask is that when you're using the, this blade that, you know, I'm there and help you guiding it. And also, if you want any, like, I don't know, if you want any uh, inspiration or questions, come to me and it's all cool. So anyways... Ty and Benjamin sit down. They're like, oh, let's make, like, wooden knives or something. So they're given a pocket knife, and they're taught how to whittle away. It's like, always, you got to face it away from you. Never face it towards you. If I see you guys facing it towards you, I got to revoke your knife privileges. Not, to, not trying to be that guy, but it's part of the jab. So anyways, right, they look over, and they see the emo kid. And he's, like, whittling away at the spoon, and he's or at this at the stick. And they're all like, um... So eventually, at the end of class... 
there or the end of the activity. They're asked to go around in a circle and say a little bit about what they made and show it off. So Ty's like, all right, well, here's like a butter knife and didn't turn out that well. And everyone laughs a little bit. And the camp counselor's like, dude, it's fire. That's your first time. Don't even worry about it. Eventually it comes around to the emo kid. And the emo kid is like, whips out this like almost perfectly whittled. Like this is like really professionally well done. And the camp counselor is like, wow, what is that? He's like, this is a wand for my warlock activities. Nobody better cross me now that I have access to my most powerful weapon of a wand. And everyone was like, what? Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That's the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart as many po comments as I possibly can that say emo. And then also, if you want to support the channel, watch a bunch of these videos in one sitting. I call it binge watching. So if you're sitting down, maybe playing video games or trying to go to sleep or something like that, watch like 10 videos in a row if possible. I know it's a big ask, but if you do so, please leave a comment down below. I'll heart it and even shout you out as on screen right now, shouting out some people who are supporting the channel and telling me about it. So yeah, thanks to these guys and you guys, and let's get right back to it. So fast forward a couple days into the week, and every single day, the emo kid's been doing weird things. So right now is a Wednesday. For context, they got there on a Sunday night. So this Wednesday night, Benjamin and uh, Benjamin's kind of becoming like the side character for Ty. Like he's becoming like pretty close friends. And Ty and Benjamin are kind of like talking about the emo kid and being like kind of tracking the weird things he's been doing. But tonight is one of the weirdest things he's done. So once again, Ty and Benjamin have been noticing that the emo kid has been going outside every single time, like 15 minutes after they go to sleep. So Ty and Benjamin, they both get in bed, and when the lights are turned off, they wait about 15 minutes, and sure enough, the emo kid gets out of bed and walks down the steps. And he walks outside, and he walks to kind of this like big forest clearing. So Ty and Benjamin, they both walk over, and they both look up, and they look out of the window. And they're looking out, and they see the emo kid, and normally he just stands there blankly. But this time was different. He was getting to work. They saw the stick that he made in the wands, in like the wand craft whatever class, and or the woodsmanship craft, uh, class. And he takes the, the end of it that isn't pointy, where you do the spell, and he puts it into the dirt, because he's standing on a pretty big dirt clearing, and he starts drawing this circle, this very big circle. And, and Ty looks over at Benjamin and is like, dude, what on earth is going on? Like, what is this kid doing? And Benjamin's like, dude, I have no idea. And they look at it, and he's drawn a complete perfect circle around him. And then he steps out of it. And then he starts making lines within the circle. He goes from the top of it, down, up, down, across, up. He's made a perfect upside down pentagram. And if you don't know, that's basically like a sign of like ship or the something. So at this point, right, Ty and his friend are freaking out. They're like, oh my God, he's trying to like summon something. And sure enough, the emo kid starts like waving his wand around in these weird directions and starts like spinning around in a circle and making these like weird movements. And <laughs> if TikTok was around, I bet Ty would have been like, bro, is he trying to do a TikTok dance or something? But anyways, Ty and Benjamin are watching as the emo kid, after making the upside down pentagram, just starts waving it around and starts speaking. Like, because they crack the window was cracked open a little bit and they start hearing like like some weird <laughs> okay maybe it wasn't as goofy as that but he was kind of talking these like weird tongues or whatever and that's when they heard the light flick on not in their room because they would have seen that they heard the light flick on in the middle cabin the middle part or the middle part of the cabin that is where the camp counselor lived. He must have heard or must have felt like some kind of disturbance or something because they see the emo kid drop his, like grab his wand and sprint out of there and sprint so quickly, he goes to the back room. And that's when like Ty and Benjamin are like, oh my God, he's sprinting here. So they quickly jump into bed and are, you know when, I don't know if you guys did this, but like when you're, when you were up later than you should and your mom is about to run into like open the room and you just jump into your bed and then you just stay super, super, super still that was them like it doesn't matter if you're sprawled out in a weird position you're staying as still as possible so they jump in they're super still and, and they watch as the door opens and the emo kid runs in and runs up up to like the second bunk and just sits in there and that's when like they see like literally 10 seconds after the emo kid gets into his bed they see the light flicker on and the, and the camp counselor who's for cabin b or whatever walks in is like 
hey, 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 I saw something out there. And you guys go out there and like, you know, everyone's pretending to be like, what? Like they just woke up. The emo kid is really pretending to be like, what? I don't know what's going on, bro. And obviously Ty and Benjamin, you know, they're trying to like pretend like they weren't up watching the whole thing. And the kid on the very top of like, uh, uh, Ty just is still completely asleep. So counselor's like, all right, whatever. He's like, all right, well, remember, it's a punishable offense if you guys leave the cabin during night. Like, you will be forced to go back home. And you don't want to miss the fun retreat we're doing this weekend. And they're all like, all right. They're like, yeah, it wasn't us. I don't know what it is. And that's when the camp counselor's like, what? And he sees, he looks outside the window, and that's when he sees it. He's like, stay here. And he goes outside, and they all watch as he walks outside and he sees like the, the upside down pentagram, like drawn into the circle or whatever, drawn, drawn into the dirt. And he's just looking at it and he takes out like his iPhone four. Cause it was like 2015 or whatever. And he takes a photo of it with like flash, takes another photo, steps back, takes another photo and everyone else pretends to be asleep as they go back in next day rolls around and they're walking to their first activity from uh, breakfast and Ty and Benjamin happen to be in the same group. And Ty's like, dude, the emo kids insane. Like that was ridiculous last night. And Benjamin's like, I've never been more freaked out besides the first night, bro. Like this, this kid's insane. And at this point they start talking about the camping retreat. So I mentioned this like a couple minutes ago when the camp counselor said, you guys, you guys don't want to miss the special fun camping retreat we're doing. So they stayed out in cabins, but part of the wilderness camp, whatever, at the very end of it, at the very, like the last Friday night to Saturday, they go, they hike out kind of far, farther out into the woods. They bring like uh, camping equipment and they kind of like camp out like that. So they both of like Ty and Benjamin were a little bit worried because that basically meant that they were going by group and they were going to be out in the woods in tents by themselves with the creepy email kid. So anyways, let's just fast forward to that day. It's Friday and everyone is kind of packing their little bags and the camp counselor for each group packs their like supply kit, medical supplies, radio, the food that they're going to be eating. And he's like, all right, everyone grab like, um, everyone like groups of two grab a tent. And so sure enough, people pair up and Benjamin and Ty are together and they grab this tent and they start walking over to the campsite. And Ty and Benjamin are like, Benjamin was like, dude, I heard that like, you know, there's only like enough tents so that like we have to pair up with someone. And he said, I heard that it's random. I heard that we don't get to choose who we pair up with. And Ty's like, dude, that's insane. We already have friends. I get in the beginning them assigning us stuff, but like we know people now. This is the last day. Like why would we need to sign bunk with someone random? And, they're, and Benjamin's like, dude, I don't know if that's true. That's just what I heard. So eventually they get to the campsite. Anyways, so they get to the campsite, right? And, you know, they start doing, they set up, they're kind of like, they sit around a bunch of logs. So they, they like light a little fire and they've like baked beans in a can or something. Then they also go out and they kind of like clear the land for to put down the tents. They all set up a bunch of tents in the group of two that they carried it over in. And Ty at this point is thinking, all right, we're good because I'm going to be with Benjamin because, I mean, we're in groups of two already. Why would they need to reassign us groups? And so once again, they were asked back to the campsite, or not the, the original campsite, but the little campfire they made. It's getting kind of late, and the camp counselor's like, all right, guys, time for me to assign you your bunk mates or your camp tent mates. And Ty in his head is like, no, 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 no. So Benjamin and so-and-so, so-and-so and so-and-so. So, and you know when there's like that one guy you don't want to be with or something like that, and like you're being assigned in a list? And you, and you don't hear your name, but you also don't hear his name. And the number of combinations starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you start freaking out. Well, this is what was happening to Ty until he realized that he was doomed before, you know, the words were even said because the camp counselor went through the entire list, but he didn't say Ty's name or the emo kid's name. And that's when the camp counselor said, Ty and the emo kid, obviously said his real name, but you know what I mean. And Ty was just like, Oh, I'm not going to make it tonight. I'm not going to survive. I better write some like uh, my some letters to my mom saying I love you because I'm not making it tonight. Oh my god. And Benjamin is just staring at him like and afterwards walks up to him and says, "Hey, if you need help, yeah, like we got to come up with some kind of signal." So Ty's like, "Okay. I'm going to like I don't like 
I'm just going to run out of there and I'm going to run over to like no signals, no nothing. I'm running over to your campsite if anything happens. And Benjamin's like, all right, that's totally fine, man. So anyways, Ty goes up to the emo kid. He's like, so looks like we're bunking. And the emo kid is like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and Ty's like, yeah, man. He's like, well, I guess you're one of my more favorite mortals that I know. And Ty's like, <laughs> yeah. So they both like put down their sleeping bags in this kind of very cramped tent. And Ty is just sitting there like, okay, okay. And they have this kind of light. And it's like one of those like uh, battery powered lights. And the emo kid's like, good night, Ty. And turns it off. And Ty's like, <gasps> like starts completely freaking out. He's like, okay, okay. I can't see anything, but we're okay. And that's when he hears the emo kid stand up. And Ty's like, no, 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 no. And the emo kid is like standing above him. And he's like, all right, well, maybe I should just accept my destiny. And that's when the emo kid, instead of striking him over there with a rock or something, just leaves. He opens up the camp tent and walks out. And Ty is like, what? So Ty kind of like gets up and he looks out and he sees the emo kid and the emo kid is like standing or is like crouching on all fours. And then he starts howling, starts howling to the full moon. He's like, Ey! but it's like a really weird howl. And Ty's is like, what? And that's when he hears the kind of like the camp counselor who's with us be like, hey, hey, who's that? You're not allowed to be outside your campsite. And you just see the emo kid go, ho! Uh oh, and just sprints towards like the uh, sprints towards the tent. So Ty jumps back into his bed, and the emo kid, who's not very coordinated apparently, instead of like jumping through the wind, like the the open flap, jumps right through the tent. So breaks right through the tarp of the tent, cracks the entire thing. The entire thing comes collapsing down, and Ty just Ty just like has his eyes closed as the entire tent falls on top of him. And that's when you hear all this yelling and the camp counselor's like, what's going on over here? Are you guys all right? And he just like starts ruffling, rum rummaging through all the like the rubble and stuff. And Ty starts like getting up and he pushes the stuff off of him. The camp counselor was like, was that you out there doing those howling noises? He's like, no. And then sure enough, the emo kid is just standing there like you. And he says to him, like, you wouldn't understand what I was doing. And the camp counselor was like, it was, oh, I told you before that you can't be leaving your tent during the nighttime. Like, after I said goodbye, you were supposed to go to your tent and not leave it. You were out there. And he's like, I was performing a protection ritual. And camp, camp counselor was like, what? I was performing a protection ritual so that everyone would be safe at night from the demons and ghosts of the underworld. Camp counselor was like, uh, What? And at that point, right, they just realized, okay, this is a lost cause. And at this point, the worst thing was that uh, there was nowhere for them to sleep because uh, the camp was completely destroyed, or the tent was completely destroyed. So the camp counselor was like, fine, you two, bring your sleeping bags. You can sleep in my tent. So the three of them are, are kind of like crushed in there. And eventually the camp counselor was like, all right, you two are in here. I'm going to sleep outside. No shenan shenanigans. So it was the most uncomfortable sleep of Ty's entire life. But eventually, the day is over. He gets up. You know, they start packing up their stuff, and they're walking back to the campsite. And that's when Ty meets up with Benjamin and is like, dude, like, what? How, like, you're not going to believe it. And Benjamin's like, I heard a lot of yelling. Are you okay? So Ty tells him the story. He's like, dude, that's insane. So anyways, they get back, and uh, Ty, sing Ty actually had a really good time at the camp, minus the emo kid, like, cringe fest or whatever. Eventually, Ty's parents come to pick him up, and Ty's mom's like, man, you gotta tell me all about it. Like, how was it? Ty's like, it was really good, but it's quite a story. And so for the entire, like, two-hour car ride back, Ty tells them the entire story, and let me just say... Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of probably one of the cringiest emo kids on planet Earth. I'm not even kidding. This is probably one of the craziest stories I've received. So sit back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story. Let's call him Oliver. So this all happened back in the good old days of like 2014, 2015 when like goth 
emo, uh, all that type of stuff with like super popular. And by the way, if you dress goth or emo, I literally don't care. That's a totally fine style. As long as you aren't an emo kid like this kid, you're totally cool in my book. So anyways, right, this all started when Oliver and his friends were in the mall. And this was way back in the day. And Oliver and his friends were just kind of like walking around in the mall. They were trying to figure out something to do. I mean, it was a Saturday. So, I mean, who knows? Like, you know, I mean, like they, they were trying to figure out something that they wanted to do. And Oliver's friend was like, hey, man, do you mind if we stop in Hot Topic? Hot Topic is a t-shirt store that sells a lot of store, a lot of stores, sells a lot of different types of t-shirts, a lot of like trending stuff, a lot of like, and, and since, you know, emo and goth was kind of trending at the time, they sold a lot of shirts and attire that really fit with that outfit. Like you got like black t-shirt that says like society. And then you got like a, uh, a, a spiky collar. I don't know, man. But anyways, right, Oliver and his friends stopped in Hot Topic, and Oliver wasn't really, you know, there to, like, buy something, so he was kind of just walking around and chilling, and he accidentally bumps into the emo guy, or this the emo guy. I'm introducing a new guy, emo kid, whatever, we'll call him the emo kid. So anyways, right, this kid turns around, and he's got this, like, this black t-shirt on. He's got a spiky choller spiky collar choker type thing. He's got black pants. He's got black shoes on. His hair is black and it's like slicked down. So he has these like massive, really weird bangs where you can't even see his face. He's like, watch where you're going, punk. And Oliver's like, sorry, man. He's like, wait, I know you, dude. You're from my school. And Oliver's like, yeah, I, I think we're in class together. No, I've, I've seen you around, though, because Oliver's starting to remember this one time he saw this really weirdo-looking kid who was like, Ugh, man, no one gets me. And so sure enough, the, the kid, the emo kid, is like, Bro, I don't think you bumped into me on purpose. I think you were coming for me and my kind. And Oliver's like, dude, what, what, what are you talking about? And the emo kid's like, bro... I think we both know that you just hate the emo kids. And two other emo kids appear at a, some, like, appear, basically appear out of thin air. And they were like, what's this kid talking about? Like, what's going on over here? And the emo kid's like, yeah, this kid over here. He goes to my school and he hates me on purpose. And he just bumped into me and it was crazy. I, 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 he can't do this to us, man. And the other emo kid's like, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you have against the emo kids? And at this point, right, Oliver... It was literally just standing in a Hot Topic t-shirt store because his friend wanted to buy a t-shirt. In Oliver's head, he's like, bro, please hurry up and get that t-shirt. But he says, look, I accidentally bumped into this kid, like this guy. I'm sorry. It's not on purpose. You can trust me. And the emo kid's like, uh, no, dude, I totally know what like a bump on purpose would feel like. That one felt so purposeful. Like I literally felt the purpose in the bump. It was crazy. And Oliver's like, dude, what do you mean by that? And the emo kid's like, are you getting aggressive with me, son? Uh, do you want to fight me, son? Oh, he wants to fight me, dude. And at this point, Oliver's like, all right, guys. All right, boys, have a good day. Oliver goes over, finds his friend. He's like, dude, I got. I, I met a bunch of weirdos. They want to fight me. I literally bumped into them. And like his Oliver's friend's like, all right, dude. Like, that's like, oh, all right, we'll, we'll go. That's fine. And then Oliver's friend sees this like, pack of like emo kids walk over and Oliver's friend starts cracking up. He's like, bro, you can't be serious. You can't seriously think, uh, wait, these kids, these kids want to fight you, dude, they're not going to do anything. They can probably barely walk here without fainting. And the kids are like waddling over and the emo kids like, don't think I forgot what you did, man. And so sure enough, right, you know, Oliver and his friend, they buy the t-shirt, they leave. And you know, Oliver is telling his friends all about what's going down. His friend's like, completely laughing. They find it hilarious. And that's because Oliver thinks to himself, well, I'm never going to see these kids again. It doesn't really matter, right? Oh my God. Was, Al was Oliver wrong? Because this started one of the most insane sagas that Oliver has ever, has ever had in his life. He was telling me that like, he's experienced a lot of crazy things, but the story that is to follow what just happened is probably the craziest thing that ever happened to Oliver ever. So skip forward a week. An entire week has passed by, actually a little bit more because it's not a weekend. Oliver, it's a Monday morning. He gets up. He's like, oh my God, I got to go in. So, you know, he gets up, eats breakfast, gets on the bus. It's just like, oh my God, man. I, I, is it already Monday? 
Dude, that's freaking crazy. He gets into school, and he's walking to his locker, all kind of like half awake or whatever. He has his backpack on. And he gets to his locker. And that's when he realizes that something, something's wrong. Because his locker is like halfway open. And like the lockers didn't have locks on them. But Oliver always like closed it by the end of the day. He'd grab his backpack, and he would shut it all the way, and it would close. And he noticed it was halfway open, which was weird because no other lockers were halfway open. I mean, some were, but they were very obvious. The people just left them open or whatever. And Oliver goes up to his locker, and he opens it very close, like very, very slowly. And that's when he sees a little something in the background. You know, he sees a little something in the very far back of his locker. So he, you know, he gets his, like, his iPhone, like, 3 or whatever, d- opens up his flashlight app, or <laughs> I remember when that was a thing, shines it, and sure enough, he sees in, like, in the back of his locker, in, like, black marker, he sees a, like, a skull and crossbones, like, scribbled on there, and then said, you're next, fear us. And, you know, at this point, Oliver is like, what, the- what, huh? Huh? What? What? Like, what's going on here, boys? Like, I don't... Why? And so sure enough, like, Oliver, like, hits up his friend. He's like, bro, did you do this? And his friend's like, dude, no, I'm not cringe. <laughs> and and Oliver's like, all right, well, if it wasn't you guys, well, then who could it... Like, that's, that's really weird. And remember, the whole emo experience, like, the emo kid thing that happened at Hot Topic over a week ago was a pretty crazy experience... But at that time, Oliver had completely forgotten. Because don't forget that the main emo kid actually went to Oliver's school. And Oliver recognized him from being in the hallways once. 